Okay, welcome everybody. You are live on the Remax Hallmark networking page. Look how crowded it is. Oh, look how packed this uh, meeting room is. Today. I wonder what you're all <laughs> doing here. So, blue screen. <laughs> blue screen. My apologies for the uh, technical glitches and difficulties. I know some of our, our Hallmarkers are joining us as well, or trying to join us on the Zoom meeting. I guess with such high attendance, I probably reached my uh, meeting limit as well. That's the reason why. We're having difficulties logging in online. So today what we're going to do, uh, we might eat, eat into our office meeting time, uh, because I intended this course to be an hour, and of course it took uh, 20 minutes just to set this thing up. We're going to go through the new web forms. I did make this a mandatory training because come January 1st, the old web forms is going to be no longer, which is the, CREA, the legacy version that you're currently using. And the new web forms will be in. So come January 2, if you're working with a buyer, or if you want, if you need a listing go up, and then all of a sudden, the uh, the point of view that you see online is completely different. You're going to be probably wondering what's going on, and I want you to be fully prepared for it. And that's what we're going to uh, spend our time on today. December 16. December 16. Yeah. 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 No, no, January. Don't make it so. <laughs> I saw a red, red alert yesterday. Yeah, I saw something too. I, yeah, I didn't fully read it, so something, something's going to change. Okay, so I hope all of you, in one case or another, brought something to follow along with your laptops, your desktop, if you brought your desktop, I'm just kidding, uh, your iPads. I haven't tried this on iPad yet or iPhone or anything like that. I know that it is mobile friendly, so it should uh, work in one, it doesn't sound too good? I think it's so much better on computer. It's much better on computer, okay, great. So I want everybody who's uh, who has a laptop to, to log into this page. Uh, this is your Treb uh, homepage. I've never seen that before. You've never seen this before? <laughs> <laughs> you sold anything recently? <laughs> And I hope it's clear enough on the screen because there is a recording of this that I'm going to uh, give all of you access to uh, as well once this is done. Okay, how many of you realize that there's two versions of uh, web forms? Yes. Okay, so there's a CREA version and there's a track version of it. Now, both of them are using what is a platform? Lone Wolf. They're both powered by Lone Wolf. Uh, the problem is there's, there's, there's different features in each of them, however, they don't communicate with each other. Whatever you do on your CREA web forms will not appear on your TREB, Instant Net Authenticine web forms, and vice versa. So if you have, for example, right now, set up templates, or if you're uploading all of your, leg your uh, legacy web forms, uh, transaction kits and all that into CREA web forms, you won't see it on TREB's web forms. And so again, come the new year, if you're trying to access it on TREB and you're wondering where did everything go, or why did everything disappear? Well, it's because it's on your CREA. And vice versa, if you're working on the TREB Instant and Authenticine version of it, and you're not finding it on the CREA, the reason why is because none, these platforms are not connected to each other. I'm gonna go through a couple of steps and, and features and functionalities of each uh, platform so that you're fully aware of, of what to, how to log in, uh, what to do as far as setting up. Today we're gonna talk about setting up the transaction kits. I'm not gonna go through the setup of every single transaction kit. I will give you an example of one transaction kit that we will work, work on together. And then based on the recording of this or you know, follow-up training, uh, you can uh, pretty much replicate the steps in that to create all of your transaction kits, just like you have currently in web form. So some of you have a transaction kit for buy, sell of a condo, buy, sell of a freehold, uh, a lease listing for a condo, lease listing for a freehold, lease offer, for a, a condo lease offer for a PO. So those are the eight kits. All right, everybody with me so far? Yeah. Because we haven't yeah. really done anything yet. All right, okay. When you log in, you're gonna see the home page, and right now as it appears on this side here is the Internet Authenticine login for the web forms. If you click on that, you're gonna open the Internet Authenticine version of it, which is Treb's version. And here you're going to open mm -hmm. the web forms version. So if your first, you know, the first question is how do I access CREA web forms or TREP web forms, that's the way to do it. Now, just skipping ahead a few steps, when you look at your TREP listings, now you notice that there's a button that says Internet Authenticine, right? So there's certain features with the TREP version that allow you to create an offer right from a listing. And so when you start working on those offers, keep in mind that you're using the TREP system, not the CREA system. And again, we're gonna go through a bit of the pros and cons in each, like what we discussed in our previous meeting. 
But today we're going to go and jump right into creating a transaction kit. That's the first thing we're going to do today. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing it on Trebs Internet Authentisign, and then I'm going to show you how to create it on Kriya's web forms. So you're going to see both. And the steps are very similar because they're the similar platforms. Uh, there are just a couple of features that I'm going to go through about Trebs platform that are advantageous to some of you if, if you decide to work your, your business a certain way. And uh, let's get started. So we're going to click on the Internet Authenticine, and this is going to be loading Trebs web forms. So if you've been using web forms all the time, what mm -hmm. are you using then? Is that web, uh, Treb or? If you've been using web, so the current web forms is by Kriya. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. so this is Korea, and now it's called the legacy version of it, but that'll be completely gone. Okay. And so it's, this is pretty much a sort of the divide between uh, Treb's version of web forms and Korea's version of web forms. And can we ex import from uh, Korea? So I'll explain the okay. importing, exporting. Uh, I'm going to save that to the end, okay. because I feel now that that's not going to be the most important thing. I feel that the most important thing right now is number one, you're able to create your transaction templates. Number two, you're able to use one of those templates to actually create an offer. Number three, you're able to do a digital signature or electronic signature on that offer. That's what I'm going to cover. Uh, and then number four, I'm going to show you a TREB feature that allows you to direct upload your listing from an MLS data information form, which unfortunately Korea doesn't currently have the capa capability to do. Once you log into TREB's Internet Authentication, this is what you see. Now I'm going to show you something. When you click on Korea Web Forms, so we have to open up the second first. window, and you have to accept it first. So, when you look at, oh. when you click on the Korea version, this is what you see here. So you notice that they are they are pretty much, what, similar. Same, yeah. They're similar. The only difference is color scheme of this happens to be blue green. This happens to be blue and red, right? But this is the first distinction you have to make because. I, I want you to understand that if you're under Korea's web forms or under Treb's web forms, they are completely different from each other in terms of the platforms. And that's what I mean by whatever you do here won't appear there. Whatever you do there won't appear here. So right now what we're going to do is create a transaction kit, which is, uh, like let's say, for example, our, what we're going to do is create a freehold. Uh, let's do a freehold buyer. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. So free old buyer, we have several forms that we want to create. <coughs> now, I've already done this stuff in advance. Uh, can somebody take a note for me, just so that we can make this process a bit easier? I'm sorry, John. Just how do you get to Korea? I don't see it on my screen here. Right there. Look. So when you're on your home screen, web just above web forms. Forms. Just above web Korea, forms. you click on web forms. Oh, yeah. I do, I do that all the time. But is that what you mean? That's the Korea. Oh, that's Korea. Right. Okay, I'm using Korea and Treb because they are two different platforms. Okay, okay. So it's not the same thing anymore. Right? So this is called a hamburger menu because it looks like a hamburger. Click on it and it expands so you don't have to decipher what these symbols mean. Same thing here with Korea. Click on the hamburger menu, it will expand. Most of the menu items are pretty much the same as each other. Now I want somebody to take notes because what we're going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to use my existing transaction template for a freehold buyer sale. And I want you to take note of all the forms that I put in there. And then we're going to create from scratch that transaction kit together. Does that make sense? I'm trying to see how to okay. to, create. to create a transaction kit, have both of them. you have to go into the setup. Okay. You have to go into the setup. Setup. Click on the setup button and you see here transaction templates. Once you click on transaction templates, any templates that you've created will show up here. So right now I'm seeing the templates from my existing truck. They're already in there. That's right. Well, if you've already put it in there, you're going you're gonna to see it there. So then they're going to stay? They won't be gone January 1st? Um, they sh if you're using it on the new platform, then they won't should be okay. So again, on the Korea Web Forms version, same button, set up. Can we do one at a time? Yeah, let's do one Great. at a okay. time. Okay. Just do uh, uh, Treb right now. Just do Treb right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So how did you get that condo sale on residential? I'm not getting it. I've already, I've already put it in. Yeah. We have oh. to, how do we put ours in? How Let me do start from the beginning. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Why? What's the time on? Like two minutes? Quickly. 
Well, my templates are blank. They've been erased. You know what? Can I get a, can I get a volunteer to come up? Somebody who will want to volunteer and get your set. Who wants to volunteer to get their transaction kit uh, templates out today? I will do that. Fine. Okay, Hus. I just need you to log in. Actually, I'm going to do it for you. I just need your authentication. I know all your deals now, Murad. Oh, no. Okay. All your deals. <coughs> Go ahead and log in. I'll do, I'll, I'll do everything, but I just need your login. So that I can show you from scratch what somebody setting it up from scratch, like yourself. So you're see. setting mine for yes. me right now. Yes, I'm going to set it up from scratch. Appreciate it. You're welcome. I'll send the invoice and in the, uh, the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a catch in there. Does Korea, does Korea have an authentic no. no, 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 you put no, the authenticator no, 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 right in. I'll tell you. Okay. I know. You're done. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to zoom it in per request of some of our agents in our overflow meeting rooms today. Okay, wonderful. So this is a good, a good idea. We're going to do Trebs first today. Yes, because please. once you learn Treb, you're pretty much going to know Koreas because the menu items are pretty much the same. There's just a couple, couple of functionality differences. And this is somebody completely from scratch. This is uh, Huss. So Huss is going to be lucky because he's going to have uh, everything set up today. So if you're starting from scratch, to access Treb's web forms or Treb Internet Authentisign, you click on the Internet Authentisign button. Yes. So that means like the Koreas old Yes. Web forms. Yes. They can be transferred to the Kriya. I'll web explain form. that in the end. I'll explain that in the end. I'll right. explain that in the end. So Huss's is brand blank. It's blind. It's yeah. fresh. Like mine. Brand new yeah. start. Brand That's like why most I started from the beginning. Right? So this is gonna require a little bit of your participation. So this is the this is pretty much what's called the member dashboard. This again is the hamburger menu that when you open it up you're going to see all of the various functionalities that we are going to go through pretty much all of these today. The first thing you want to do to be, to be ahead of the January or whatever D day, with whatever you want to call it, the deadline of having everything moved over is create transaction kits completely from scratch so that you have the freeholds, a condo, buy, sell, lease, everything. So Hus does not have anything set up right now. What, he's, what he will do for me is click on the setup button this menu appears. <coughs> Click on transaction templates, and he has nothing. Zero, like right? Me. None. Yeah. So you saw mine set up because I I already had mine. Now one thing is that I did, I did discover with this activity: don't do both simultaneously, because I think uh, even though they don't communicate with each other, if you load both of them up. Um, I think it starts pulling from whichever one you ended up loading up first, so it's going to get confusing. Uh, pick one to work with at a time. So Does that make why sense? Would, why would you work with both of them? I just wanted to show you both. No, but I know, but why, 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 is there any reason to use... No, it doesn't make sense to, to use both of them. Just one or the other, right? Just use one or the other. Just yeah. pick one or the other. And at the end of today's yeah. session, you can figure out which one you want to try and use. I'll show you the differences. And, uh, so, uh, okay, so what we'll do is we'll save all the questions after we do yeah. this process. Yeah. So that we, we don't uh, hold everything up. Uh, transaction templates, Hus has none. We're going to create add. And we're going to call this, uh, let's call it uh, freehold, uh, freehold buyer. Purchase, yeah. Or freehold buyer. Okay, freehold. Is this a template or we're just This is a one? transaction kit. Yeah. Freehold buyer uh, kit, let's call it. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Now, what's really neat about Trab's Instant Attempt Design is that because you can choose the type of transaction this is, it will map signatures. So just, just a heads up to show you what how we're able to do this stuff later on. What it means by mapping signatures is when you create all of your web forms through Trebs Internet Authentisign and you have a freehold buyer offer, once you create a transaction with it using these kits and it knows that it's a freehold sale, for example, freehold sale meaning you're selling a listing, it will automatically map the signatures of each buyer in the appropriate places of every single form. Whereas on Kriya's web forms, it does not do that at the moment. 
I've already tried this and this is confirmed to work. So what does it mean? When you're doing working with Realtor, BRA, Agreement of Purchase and Sale, waivers and everything, you don't have to manually input where the signatures appear. It will already show up. So what we've done is we've named it Freehold Buyer's Kit. It's a freehold sale so that the system knows what kind of transaction it is and it can do the it can utilize the functionality of it to appropriately map John, there was signatures. One thing. Sorry, yeah. using it says freehold using sale on the type yes. on the pull down menu. Yes. Okay. Residential sale. Freehold Why sale. Why it says residential? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's the same. I mean, it's, it's different. I don't know why it's different. We I mean, I don't have a freehold, I have residential. No, residential sale. Okay. Yeah. Is this like an update or something? Yeah. Or? No, you don't have residential. I have residential. I have residential. Yeah, I mean, How many of you have? Okay, so I don't know why this is. I have the same residential. Okay. Why am I getting this? I'm getting this. Okay, so if you're having technical issues right now, just please go along with it because, as you can imagine, with so many people, um, I don't know why some of yours says residential. I don't know why some have freehold. Uh, I have a feeling that maybe you've logged into both. So if that's the case, log in, log, log out and log back in, so that we have. How many of you have logged into Trebs Internet Authentic Sign only and see if, what I see here? Freehold sale. Nobody? You have it? Yours says freehold sale? Yeah, I have logged in. Okay. Because maybe I have to sign You may have logged into both Kriyas like earlier. I may have confused you, so I apologize. We're going on, because we started fresh here, whatever Hus sees is pretty much what you'd see if you started this process from scratch. Okay. Um, so we're going to click on update here, just to update the information, make sure everything is okay. Now the neat thing about the TREB incident that is signed through Lone Wolf, whether you're using Krias or, or TREBS, is that there's a lot of functionality that's coming up that we're not going to talk about right now. So for example, you can have checklists, you can have documents associated with it, uh, you can have teams and sharing, so you can actually share forms with your team members if you have a team. But what we're going to focus on today is the forms. Yeah. We're going to create a transaction kit, specify what forms are in that transaction kit, and then we'll be, we'll be done with that particular process. Okay? So in Huss's example, there, is no, there are no forms yet, so we're going to click Add, and now you're going to start to see this screen. So what forms would be in a uh, residential for a freehold for a sale, if you're representing the buyer? It's a sale agreement. Okay, so for example, working with a... Realtor. Okay. Yeah. So start typing that in, and you're going to see the forms that are available. So for example, this one is working with a Realtor One Page Fastable. One thing to note is there's an Ontario version of it, and there's a Toronto version of it. I believe the only difference is the Toronto version of it says Toronto Real Estate Board. The Ontario version has probably uh, Aria or whatever no. it is. So we're going to use yeah. the which ones do you want to use? Ontario. 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 Ontario ones. Okay, we'll use the Ontario. One page. Yeah. Okay. So we've added. Working with a realtor by clicking on that checkbox. Well, you can Next. slow down a little bit. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> like a. <laughs> Is everybody with me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So again, because of again, guys, because of a group of this size, and I know that uh, uh, some of us have varying speeds. I'm I'm trying my best to do as much as possible in this time frame. The reason why I'm recording it is so that you can refer to it in the future as well. Um, so with all due respect. Out of respect for your time as well, can we can we try to yeah. at least yeah. go in with the pace, yeah. right? And let's keep the questions to the end of this, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm happy to go through any of it, but let's so that you see the example. So working with the realtor, you click on that. That form is now added. You see this? Yeah. 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 That means that one form is on there. Next is buyer rep agreement, right? So I start typing buyer rep. You you press add on top, right? Don't. Okay. So. No. Go along with no. the way I'm doing the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. You press add once we have all the forms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But good question. Okay. Uh, by representation agreement, Ontario 300. That's there. Yeah. What else? Um, confirmation. Of confirmation. Of confirmation. Confirmation, which is 320. Yeah. Okay. Well, 320. 320. So form 320, confirmation of co-op. Make yeah. sure you get paid. What else? 801. 801. Good. Offer summary FinTrack, document. Yeah. What else? FinTrack ID 630. Yeah. Right? Individual identification record. Now here's yeah. the thing. If you have two, three, four buyers, this is only going to let you add one for now. So what you'll see is I'm going to add one for now, and later on I'm going to add additional ones. And if you are working with a transaction kit, later on you can, you can always add more to the form. So just because you've got a set kit doesn't mean you can't add any additional forms. Right. So what else? It's the same like the old one. Same as you. Yeah. Create a purchase yeah. sale. Form one. 
hundred, the primitive Christian seal. Now here's the thing to note. So just all of you remember. The way the system is set up for whatever reason, you have to decide here how many Schedule A pages you're going to use, which is kind of sucks. Because unlike the, the rich and the current web forms, you can just keep adding pages. Yeah. Here you kind of have to decide, you know, is it one Schedule A page? Is it two? Is it three? Is it five? Is it six? For today's example, we're going to use two pages because we're going to be copying and pasting clauses uh, that, that's going to fill two pages. If you need more Schedule A pages, don't worry because once you've loaded the transaction kit standard, you can add additional Schedule A pages. Does that make sense? So we're, so we're going to use one. two. Yes, exactly. So now we have that. What else? What else do we need? MLF. Amendments, waivers. Okay, so let's start with amendment to agreement of purchase and sale. So again, the way we're, the way I suggest you create your kits is have them all complete from the beginning, so that once the offer is done, of course you can either have to amend or to waive or to, um, so you notice a fulfillment, all of that sort of thing. So just have them all ready, even if you're not going to end up using it, because at least it pre-populates all of the information, so that when it comes time to a waiver, you just go into that transaction, the waiver is already there. Mm. and you just have to copy paste the clauses just to make it easier for your life yeah. uh, amendment is if you need to change the agreement of, the agreement of purchase and sale so amendment to agreement of purchase and sale and again you have to choose whether it's in, in this particular option two it starts with two schedules yeah. two schedule uh, pages so you're gonna end up doing this one 120 amendment to agreement of purchase and sale so you end up forms how did you get to forms oh you have to click on here where is it it's not coming in scroll here. down scroll down Oh, Forms. Yeah. So, notice of fulfillment. Notice of fulfillment of condition. Again, you decide one page, two page. Typically, it's going to be one page. Yeah. Unless you're yeah. doing a condo where you've got uh, financing, inspection, etc., etc. So, we're just going to use one page on this one. Uh, waiver, in case you decide to use a waiver. And that form is this one here. 123. 123. What else? 127, notice to remove conditions or notice of uh, acknowledgement uh, about conditions and offer. This is an important form that I want you all to include in your kit. The reason being, some of you may enter multiple uh, um, multiple offer situations and you may, you know, with the proper advice of lawyers and uh, mortgage brokers decide to waive or delete or not include conditions. <coughs> form 127 protects you in, in case you need to do that. What it means is you still include the conditions in there, but if you decide to cross it out, you use Form 127 as an acknowledgement from your buyer so that they understand what they're doing. What they are waiting. Exactly. Are we missing any forms? 801. 801, we have. We have what else? What else? What else? Anything else? Receipt of funds. Mutual release is the last thing. No, but you're right. You're right. No, it's, but it's true. I mean, joking, joking aside. First, let's put 635, receipt of funds. Mutual release is the last thing I want you to do. Can't we always <laughs> add a form you can. whenever we you want can. it to? Like, uh, I don't the, the good thing about this, and this is the reason why I suggest doing it this way, is you never have to fiddle around with adding forms. Once you commence a buyer transaction for a freehold or a condo, every form you'll ever need, unless it's a very special case, should be in that kit. So when you load up that transaction kit from that point on, you don't have to look for a waiver. And it it's already like a going checklist. to be Yeah, exactly. So mutual release, yes. Yes. thank you very much. We'll add that as well. So that's 122. So that's 12 forms. <laughs> he knows all the numbers. What I'm going to do at the end of this session as well is I'm going to create a document where you'll have all these eight kits checklist as to what forms you need for each. So instead of having to look for it, you're going to be able to know it. But I want you to refer to this video to understand how to add it. Right? With, with so many of us here, I mean, going through it one by one is going to be very tedious. So you're going to all going to have a link to this. It's on the Hallmark Networking page anyway, so you're always going to have access to it. And so that's mandatory to look at it. That's what's that? Happy. It's mandatory to look it's at mandatory. it. It's mandatory. It's mandatory to, to watch this. Okay. So is everybody with me so far? Okay, so this is your first question opportunity. Any questions? When you said amendments, Amendment. I, get, I get something saying library form. but Can you read it for me? Okay, we're going to do it. Amendment? Yeah. I'm checking the attendance to see. If you're not in this room and you start asking me questions after that, after this mandatory session. I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah. 
gender question. Yes. Uh, was there any reason that uh, for amendment you choose two pages scheduling? Uh, because that's the minimum. So, so this is a good question. The reason why we put on the amendment to schedule page, to schedule pages, is because that's the minimum they have. They don't have a one schedule page. So you have to have two. It's just the way it is. Very good. Schedule B is typically provided by the listing brokerage, so it's not going to be here. You want to get You're going to have to download it from the listing and then upload it into this website. Um, you know what? We're going to look at the list of everything we've done. Is, uh, is uh, everything okay, Marianne? You had a question? Yes, yes, did, did you figure it out? Yeah. Okay, yeah. anybody else going yeah. once? Mm -hmm. Twice? Go. Move on. So, move on. Yeah. Up. Okay. Hey, guys, listen. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, guys, please. please. You use either one. Right now, we're using Trip. If you try to do this on Korea, it's exactly the same process. The menu items might be different, the colors might be different, but it's exactly the same process. Both are the same. To ignore well, is well, you can't ignore it. But <laughs> okay, is everybody with me so far? Yep. yep. Now we click the magic okay, add button. And then congratulations, Hus, you have one out of eight kids ready to go. All right? So again, guys, so again, how do you see this? How do you go back and seeing this? Okay, let's go back so that you see how you, how you got to that point. Again. Once you go to, once you log in to TREP and you click on TREP's Internet Offense Sign button, member dashboard is the first thing you see. You might be worried, oh my goodness, there's nothing here. Where did my transaction kits go? You click on Setup. You click on Transaction Templates. And there you go. Hus has a freehold buyer kit. Now you multiply this by eight. Freehold buyer, uh, freehold seller. Condo buyer, condo seller. Lease, listing, uh, condo and freehold, uh, lease, like a tenant, condo and freehold. And I know for a lease, forms are very similar to each other. For example, if you're listing a condo, I think it's pretty much the same as the same format, except for the MLS data information form, right? So there's just mere minor variations. Same thing with putting an offer. There is no difference between a condo and a freehold offer form. It's pretty much just an offer to lease, right? Um, so that's one kit. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. We're done with creating transaction templates. Does anybody have any questions before we go to the next step, which is going to be very fun? Yes. Can we go through the forms? So We're going to go to the forms one more time? Okay, good. So, forms that we have for this. And again, I'm going to give you a checklist of all the forms for every kit. So, uh, 810, working with a realtor. 300, buyer rep agreement. 320, confirmation of cooperation and representation. 801, offer summary document. 630, individual identification record. So, part of our activity, I'm going to show you how to add forms to this. Uh, 100, agreement of purchase and sale with two Schedule A pages. Amendment to agreement of purchase and sale, Form 120. Form 124, notice of fulfillment. 123 is waiver. 127, acknowledgement of conditions and offer. 635, receipt of funds record. 122, mutual release. And of course, you can add additional forms if you need to. Yes, John, yes. anything different in commercial? Commercial, we're not going to touch today. We're not going to touch today. Commercial. Okay. Uh, commercial, uh, so, I haven't seen it. So I got a question. You if you want to add a form right now, just click on update. We're not going to touch oh, the, the transaction here. Once you begin a transaction, I'll show you how to add a form. I'll show you how to add a form. Now, one thing we did not do yet is actually put the clauses into our schedule A. And so we're going to do that now together. Now, again, when I email you uh, these uh, transaction kit checklist templates, I'm also going to offer. I'm going to also send out uh, what Helga created uh, for for our jump program for our new agents, uh, freehold clauses for buyers and condo clauses for buyers. A lot of you already, pretty much all of you, unless you're new, should already have these anyway. But we're just going to show you how to create it today. I'm going to create it within the transaction template so that when you initiate a buyer sale for a freehold, those clauses are already there, but I want to do it from scratch as opposed to copying and pasting because I want to show you how to find the clauses. Okay, everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now, yes. Yes.
Um, you're going to have to go back to your transaction. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. Which board are you using? I just, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just drag it. Oh, okay. So I just kind of, you know, I put okay. you're going to have to follow yeah. 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 No, so so are, you missed that. Okay, guys. I just drag it. Let's keep going. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we were in our transaction template. We clicked on the agreement of purchase and sale. We're going to go down <coughs> to the Schedule A, mm -hmm. and you notice that there's two Schedule A pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did go? So the first Schedule A page, of course, says buyer agrees to pay the balance as follows. The, sec the second Schedule no, A page does not have that. Do right? But now what we're going to do is we're going to put in your standard clauses. Now here's the first thing that I want to mention as far as differences between CREA web forms and TREBS Internet of Are you ready? On CREA's web forms, all of our Remax Hallmark clauses, I think there's like 80 to 100 of them, are accessible. Your custom clauses that you've created in the beginning of time since you've started are there. And of course system clauses which is everybody's have access to are there. On TREBS, as of the moment, you do not have access to Remax Hallmark's custom clauses. You would have to copy and paste from a PDF. So that's one pitfall of the TREB system. You also don't have access to your custom clauses. That's another thing you have to bring over manually. However, of course, the system clauses, which means any clause that's applicable to Ontario real estate, will be here, and I'm going to show you that now. So this is a quiz going back to your days as a new realtor or going back to your ARIA days as a student. What's the first clause we put into this? Deposit. Deposit. No, balance. Buyer agrees to pay the balance. Payment. Buyer agrees to what? Pay the balance. Pay the balance. Balance. Okay. Balance. That's what. Okay. So what we do on this screen, click on the clause button. And this is what I'm talking about. Personal clauses, office clauses, system clauses. Personal clauses are your custom clauses that you've had. Office clauses are Remax Hallmark's office clauses. Yeah. System clauses are ARIA clauses. Clauses, there's nothing there. I'm getting nothing. Can you upload? System clause, yes, you can. You can put it in. System clauses, that's where all of the clauses are. I was just saying, will Remax Hallmark provide? We are working on that. So, will Remax Hallmark put in? We're, we're trying to figure out, you know. Is that clause? These are ARIA trust clauses, ARIA clauses, the standard clauses. Right? Okay, so again, click on clause, and there's. There's two ways really to insert clauses. One is you look at it manually through these folders. Mm -hmm. The other that's really neat about the functionality is you search the clause. Okay? So is everybody along with me so far? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay, so we're gonna, now we're going to go into hold off questions until the end of this particular one. We're going to that next. We're going to that next. So the question by, by Usman was, how do you actually put in, you know, you put in an MLS number, it loads up all the data and everything for an offer, something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go to that next. Right now we're just adding our clauses. So first clause would be balance, right? Balance of purchase price. So here, when you type in balance, deposit pay to balance of purchase price, buyer agrees to pay. So we'll click on add, and now it's in our basket. The same thing as we've done before with adding forms into the transaction template, we can start shopping for clauses and then add them all at once when we press OK. So what other clauses would you want in here? Mortgage. Mortgage clause? Conditional. Conditional. So condition approval to assume existing, conditional sale of mortgage, discharge of existing. See, there's a lot of them that you've got to look for. Now, I'll make it easier for you when we give out the templates for this, you just copy and paste or you can just copy and paste from your existing offers. Um, but here, more, more to condition arrange a new mortgage. Yeah. If you want to preview it, you can click on it. And of course, it's going to have the long form version where if you remember your ARIA class, you have to calculate what the actual, <laughs> I'm getting some, and you get it, right? You have to calculate the actual payments or the blended monthly payments, oh, yeah. you know, all that sort of thing. So the first thing you're going to do with this is you're going to end up just deleting it anyway, right? Yeah. And just put a condition on five days. So. We're going to add more two, right? And you notice now in the basket we have two clauses. What's the third clause? Inspection, Inspection condition. So we're actually going to add that one? Inspection? No, the more two. Yes. Yeah, why not? 
inspection, inspection of property, limited inspection, inspection one, property by a home inspector, general inspection. We'll just add that one. Yeah. Right? What else? Is it freehold? So do we want a survey? Yeah. Yes. Of course we do. Vacant position. Vacant possession. Mm -hmm. Survey. Seller to provide existing survey. Okay. Yeah. What else? Access. Fire visits. Fire visits. Even though the survey wasn't in the main. Uh, there's no Which visits, so let's see. Oh, Don't you press the button for Viewing? A revisit. We're looking for a revisit. No. Right of inspection prior to completion. Now, something like this, some uh, listing agents will change re, uh, inspection to buyer visit, the wording, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're just going to use this right of inspection prior to completion or right of re inspection. Um, now, with the clauses that we send out, they are already worded appropriately. With the clauses that you're currently using, it's already worded appropriately. So I'm just doing this as a demo. So for us, once you go back into this, you're gonna replace it with the actual clauses. Now here's the thing that I haven't tried yet, that maybe if you're playing around with it, you'll figure it out or not. Because there's two pages, I don't know if it'll automatically flow to the next page, or if you have to manually um, go to the next page. Let's, you know what, let's do something ridiculous, just try it out, okay? Is that okay, Hus? Thank you. We'll play yes. around with this. Yeah, let's see. We got, we'll put 10 clauses. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. This is something we're gonna have to learn together. Yeah, so the reason why I'm showing you this is just as a warning. If you, if you plan on adding a lot of clauses, this is, this is a system flaw, regardless of whether you use CREA or TREPS. Mm -hmm. You see what happened, right? We started yeah. adding clauses like crazy. Mark. And what happens instead is that it's, you see what? You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. When this prints, it's not gonna print properly. It's only gonna print what you see. So you are actually gonna have to go in here and cut oh, okay. out the clauses and go to the second page. I'm sure they'll improve it at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. But just to keep in mind, if you're preparing an offer and you're in a rush, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your clauses are disappearing, mm -hmm. you have to manually go to the page, the second page, the clause is there. How do you add schedule under the schedule A here? Can you? We're not going to, well, well, okay. We would do that. So how do you add another schedule A? We'll do that when we actually do a transaction example. But you see where you click on add page? Oh, okay. That's where you would do it. Uh -huh. You want to add? Yes. Yeah. But I don't want to play around with this so too much because I don't want to mess up us as kids. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty easy to do that. So the cutoff would appear to be somewhere around here, right? I would cut, go to the second page, paste. Now remember, whoops. there. Now remember in this example, we're just showing you how to create the transaction template for now, right? So how do we go to the second page? You scroll down. You scroll down. Okay. you have cut. Any questions? No. Any questions? Cut and paste. Depending on the laptop, if you're using Mac or PC. Uh, control C, Control V, or yeah. Control X, sorry, Control X, Control V, or Command X, Control V. Is it, does everybody get this part? Yeah, anybody have any questions? Because we're going to be finished with this now. No. No questions? No. Moving on? Okay, good. We're now going to actually create an offer. So Huss is going to, Huss is going to actually put up a sale today with an actual property. All right. Who wants to be the real buyer? Who wants to be an actual buyer? No, nobody wants to okay, buy. I'll, I'll be the buyer. <laughs> Alex is going to be the buyer. Okay. In this next part of the example, we're going to use the transaction kit that Hus has created. We're going to basically create a transaction kit based on a real listing. And I want you to bear with me because I want you to see Alex is going to be the buyer. So we're actually going to use Alex's information and he's actually going to sign. Whether or not it becomes a legal purchase, we'll figure that out at the end of the session. Get ready for a low offer. Now, guys, before we proceed to that, I believe that this does do auto save. Every once in a while, it does auto save, but just to be sure that you're saving everything you do, click on this file button here, click on save, and then click on save. And then it'll save. Sorry, file, file, save. File, save. Cool. Oh, yeah, okay. And then save. For some reason, yeah, I, over here it shows. Okay. How can you, how can you, uh, I'm going to 
informed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. I know you're all excited. I know you're all very excited about this. Okay, guys. So, ready? Jonder, at this point, we've created a template. We've added clauses, and this is yes. That's a new so at this point, we've done one example of a transaction template. Meaning now you've got to do that eight times on your own. Now there is a service, uh, Red Rover is doing this for $50. Now I'm going to pretty much, they're going to be busy doing this. If you want them to do it for you, they'll do it for you. If you want to do it yourself, you know, you're during the holidays, you sit down on your comfy couch, drink some eggnog by the fire, have some holiday music going, and if this is what you want to do to spend your holidays, why not? They do the have too? They have a kit with clauses and everything. So they'll do eight transaction kits for you. Okay? Go in order. There is no Cyber Monday or holiday special, so you know, you pay regular price. It's not Monday. Oh, they have seven left. They have seven left. Okay? Well, you're lucky you did one. So divide, 50 divided by eight, and that's that's your best. Okay. All right, everybody ready to go for the next exciting part of this? Yes. Dashboard. Now again, empty. But you have your transaction templates. That's all you should be worried about for now. We're going to create a transaction. Click on create transaction. And now it's going to be blank. Name. Does anybody have an actual listing? Yeah. So why don't we, because it's office meeting time, who wants to sell their listing today? And knows the MLS number of it? And all, knows all the details of it? Nobody? You didn't come prepared today? No? Does anybody want to use their listing as an example? Do we have, have a listing? Okay. Yes. So Mo is going to lo load up one of his listings. He's going to give me the MLS and all of that sort of thing. Uh, so I don't know how many, how many, how do you name your transactions? By address. By address? By address? Yeah. How many of you buy buyer's no. name? No. no. By address? Okay. So some of you, so it doesn't matter what you put on the name as long as you know what you're talking about. So that when you look for it, Needs to be the search functionality of this is similar to the current web forms. If you type in the name of the person or the name of the address, or sorry, or the address itself, you'll be able to find it. So, you have to put the cursor here. I see. Name of the property. Uh, 425 Drury Avenue. You have to put the cursor. Drew Avenue. Drew Avenue. Okay. Uh, I don't want you have your fin You have your ID? <laughs> <laughs> you have a deposit today, Alex? Yeah, sure. Okay. I don't have the deposit. How do you bank this? Okay. Guys, this is a very important thing I want you to keep in mind. And the reason why we're doing this as mandatory and as early as possible, within a couple of weeks left in December, if you do not have a template, you're going to have to do all of the forms from scratch when you create a transaction. That's what I want you to, to avoid. And that's why I want you to be prepared in advance for this transition. Because again, January 2, you're going to start selling. January 1, some of you might put off this. I don't know. You got to be prepared, and so I want all of you to have this done by then. Haas, fortunately, because he ran into Alex, and Alex wants to buy property today, and Alex is going to be buying Mo's property. Haas is fortunate that he created this freehold buyer kit. Therefore, he can choose. Now, once you have eight kits, you're going to see all eight of them there, and you just have to pick which one is appropriate. That's so, cool. if it's a condo, condo. If you're doing a listing for a condo, you get a condo listing kit. Same with freehold, etc. So that's from template. That's from the template. So now, here's the neat thing about this. Import data is optional, but if it's from the Toronto Real Estate Board, Real Estate Board yeah. and it's a freehold property, you can type in the MLS mm -hmm. number. This is nothing new. On Krea's current web forms, you have this. On Krea's new web forms, you're going to have this as well. You and I know that this is only really reliant upon uh, the agent putting the fields in the proper places. So if, this, if, for example, lot size, they don't put feet, you're going to have to put in feet. You still have to go through the form to make sure all the information is correct, is what I'm trying to say. Because if they did not fill in the information, it won't, it won't show up here anyway. What is the MLS number, Mo? C. C. C46. 46. 38991. Okay. Now, in this example, Hus cooperating broker. is the cooperating salesperson. salesperson. Mo is the listing. What's going to be neat about this, when we actually do it, you guys have both have your phone in, phones here, right? Yeah. I want you to see this whole process happening. And Alex is the buyer. I guess I'll be the seller for today's exam. Is that okay? But Alex needs to bring the disclosure. Because he's disclosure? The okay. <laughs> there you go. This is, this is beautiful. Another form. So a lot of you are excited about this. So... And yeah, exactly. So right. we're going to end up adding a form. Right. So this is where you see this example. 
And uh, Alex, can you show me your pre-approval? Did you ask him for the pre-approval? Yeah, yeah, I'll show it to you later. No. <laughs> that I got it. Don't worry about it. I got Trust my financing. Is that acceptable? Okay. Ready? Okay. Hase is the cooperative salesperson. Yeah. Now, there's a wizard here, not a Harry Potter type of a wizard, but, oh, you know, so you, you go through a wizard that asks you the questions, and you, it's sort of like question and answer. You just type in the, you look at the question, you type in the answer, and it'll create most of the forms for you. Okay? That's created. So we want to use the wizard, right? We want to use the wizard. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. This is what the wizard looks like. Now, I know it, you're going to be, you know, that's a lot of information. To look at all at once but I want you to get familiar with seeing this thing so that you know how to navigate through it and you know doing what doing what things will result in what actions and what results okay so again the transaction type is a freehold sale we put in the street number jury Avenue Toronto Ontario so you notice that because we put in the MLS number it's going to populate a lot of this information you're going to see information here that is not necessarily on going to be on the form and I'll show you what I mean by that but because Mo and his team have always done a great job with their listings, you notice that everything is beautifully complete. So for example, the property width and depth is there, but in addition to that, there's also the lot size code of feet, right? Uh, the legal description is there. So good job, give them a, a round of applause because, right? Yeah, making our job a lot easier. Now the comments also appear here, but you and I know that it's not gonna appear on the, appear on the offer. So that's one of the things that I'm talking to you about is that there's information here that you're going to see that just don't worry about it. It's there, but it won't necessarily appear on the offer. Uh, 2.28 mil, uh, 2 million, uh, 2.2 million. Uh, Alex, yeah, I hope you're pre-approved. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we are competing. Our Present case. use, single family residence, right? Yeah. Property includes. So far, chattels, chattels, yeah. or? fridge, the fridge, fridge stove. Chattels, okay. okay, chattels, right? Yeah. Existing refrigerator. That's it. Stove, so, yeah. dishwasher, washer, <laughs> dryer, <laughs> Ferrari. It's <laughs> <laughs> Included. First Property first excludes. Yeah. Yeah, chandelier. Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> chandelier in. Oh, how do I say it? In bedroom. The chandelier. How to spell it? No. Chandelier <laughs> <laughs> in living room. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. That's That's room. Room. It's been a while since I've done chairs that. in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, rental items. Hot water, water tank. Cave applicable. Well, you got to check if it's applicable. Hot water tank. I had to sign it. Additional schedules. Schedule B. Right? Purchase price. Here's where it gets fun. Alex, how much would you like to offer? Oh, you mean the uh, other one? Right. You know, 2.2? 2.4. 2.4? How much? I'm going really over here. Okay, that's, that's, okay. See, it's, it's, it's time to do a CMA. It's time to do a CMA. How much? PJ, how much do you do? How much? A million bucks? Two million dollars. You gotta again. You gotta be careful. If you're using a to sign, this is a legal binding document. This is an actual offer, right? Two million might actually sell it. No, no, no. Are you sure? You are the seller. You need to decide. But I need to decide. So two million. Two. How much deposit? How much deposit? Ten thousand. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Additional deposit. None. Alex, who do you bank with? Uh, Scotia. Scotia. Is there a Scotia branch near here? <laughs> Twenty-four hours. Here with. Deposit here with. Okay. Save and exit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on next instead of save and exit because it's oh. a step two to this. Contract date. This is pulling from the listing, right? Um, offer date is what we're looking at here. So again, this is pulling from the listing. As the buyer's agent, you don't have to worry about this. This is what's happening from the listings. So just look at what's important. Offer date is December today's 5th. date. Today's date is December 5th. Yeah. Irrevocable until? Tonight. Let's do it tonight. 48 hours, it says on the uh, brokerage remarks. Let's do it till tonight. Acceptance date hasn't been accepted. 
Additional deposit hasn't been done or there isn't We're one. Done Closing date tomorrow. No, tomorrow. December thirty first. <laughs> let's give the let's give the lawyers a fun time. December thirty first is gonna be the closing. They're closed. Okay, possession date. Uh, sorry, title search date. Uh, two weeks December prior. Seventeen. Two yeah. weeks prior. Seventeen. Cutting it tight. That's pretty cool. Okay, next. These are the contacts. Now I'm gonna be very careful here because you actually have your sellers in this. Right? So I'm going to show you, because it's very important, I'm going to show you the actual things you need to know about once you get to Authenticine. I don't, I don't know how many of you use Authenticine, but there's several roles that your parties can have. Okay, they can be a signer, they can be a reviewer, they can be a, like a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and so these are the different roles. Mo, uh, Milos Mitrovic, Elena Mitrovic, uh, Hus Murad, cooperating salesperson. Uh, the buyer we haven't put in here yet. So what we're going to do in this page is we're going to add a contact. So are you doing right? anything for acceptance date? I'm sorry? No, it's not yet. It hasn't no, been accepted. No, it hasn't yeah, been accepted. Yeah, yeah. So here, okay, we're at this spot now. Alex mm, appears nowhere in this. We have to add him as a contact to this transaction. This will make your life easier. If you don't do this, this is going to be tougher for you in the following steps. It's going to be, it's going to be tough for you. You can do it later. But it's going to be tough for you because then you're going to have to figure out, you know, adding him, adding his email, adding his role, yeah, yeah. right? So do it now in step three. So we're going to add Alex as a new transaction contact. Now there's other options here. Add an existing contact. That's if you have an address. There's an address book here. So anybody you've ever done a deal with on this new system, you can add them to your address book and they can stay there. You can add yourself to it. Add contact from Google. I mean, that's if you use Google. Yes. Good question. So you know what? Let's let's pretend. Let's put no, no, that's a good question. Let's, put him in. let's like pretend I, we. I lost a step two. Okay, so let's pretend the scenario is now. Uh, one of your buyers says, "Hey, I want to look at the condo across the street. Can you come? You know, in ten minutes." You say, "Yeah, go. Ahead. Okay, let's do it." So now you have to save that. You got to get out of it. Do your showing. Come back. How do you access it again? Um, what's that? Dashboard. So let's say you're back to dashboard. You're back to dashboard. And now you see that Huss's. Huss's Huss dash dashboard is starting to light up. His transaction kit is here. Mm. His forms are here. Documents related to that. Attempt to sign, nothing yet. So this is where we start to see that. I'm glad you asked that question, Melissa, because now you start to see in forms, it's going to show you individual forms. So it's sort of like a news feed of all the forms that you're working on. Transactions will show you a feed of all the transactions that you're doing. So if you were to have to save an exit and then come back to it, you go back to transaction kit, click on it, and then you're back here. That's pretty cool. Right? Excuse now the thing is, the wizard, I believe, is gone. So now you got to do this Man. kind of manually, right? Yeah, you lost can start. all the... Uh, Actually, no, 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 let me see. Maybe not. Okay, there. You know what? Wow. Great. We found the wizard. We found the wizard. Where was it? It goes back to exactly where you were before. So this is pretty neat, actually. That was cool. Uh, you learned something today. How did you find it? Where's the Up here. Top corner. The very top right corner. It says wizard. Okay. Now you click on add. We're going to add Alex as a new transaction contact. What is Alex? Buyer. A buyer. So here's the neat thing about Treb Incident Authenticine. I don't want to sound like I'm biased or anything, but I think you can also do this on Korea web forms anyway. Once you add a role, it knows you know, what that role is supposed to be responsible for signing. Now on Treb's incident attempt to sign, however, it will map all the signatures that Alex has to sign. You're going to see that momentarily. What is Alex's first name? Legal. Alex. Legal first name. <laughs> Alex. Is it? Okay. Yep. Middle name? Uh, no middle name. No middle name? Last no. name? Melconian. M-E-L-C-O-N-I-N. Email? Uh, Alex Melconian at Trebnet.com. That's bad. Yeah, I still do. Legal name. <laughs> Preferred signature. Everybody following along? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. I've pre-filled this so that when it comes time for him to start signing forms, I don't have to do it again. Yeah. So I'm telling you this in advance because you will have a situation where you don't do this because you're so excited. And then later on, you're going to have to try to figure out, you know, how do I add this particular bar? We're not going to do that example. We're going to do it the right way which is do it in advance, trust me, it'll save you later on, especially if you've got two buyers, mm -hmm. right? 
Add it. to a dress book? Do you want to add Alex to your dress book? Who knows? Well, he might actually uh, buy this book. If he's, if he's, he's only one time If he's in the address, my address book. Yeah. Do I need to check it again? Yeah. If he's added to your address book, it'll pull mm -hmm. next time. That's but we'll, we'll add it just so we can yeah, have a little yeah. bit of fun. Now we press save. Contacts are done. Alex is the buyer. is there. Now, when you click on these three dots on the menu, you can edit, you can delete each contact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm going to delete the seller, is that okay? Because yeah. we're going to use in this example, I'm the seller. Yeah. We're going to delete it. Oh, that's the uh, Milos, right? Yeah. So we're deleting Milos. Okay, so I'm going to add new transaction contact and I'm going to add myself as the seller. seller. Now this is what's neat and this is a glimpse of the future. You see all the different roles here because Lone Wolf is creating this system to try to dominate what they're already dominating which is the back-end office um, accounting softwares and all that this will eventually become a full on pipeline from start to end email yes. and so one day you may not have to do rough trades or any of that sort of thing i know a lot of people are listening to me i gotta be careful what i'm saying here but i'm gonna get in trouble by susan um, at admin but I see, I, I see one day as all of the information you put here is just going to carry on between forms, transactions, requirements, so that once you click submit, all of the information, all the contacts, you don't have to ever manually type in uh, like multiple times. Mm -hmm. You know how you have to type yeah. in a lawyer on your agreement of yeah. purchase and sale, yeah. so and then on your rough trade, and yeah. then you, you know somehow you can... Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not going to do that today, but... Sorry, John Dell. So in reality, you don't yes. have to change the seller because uh, when you put the MLS, yes. the seller is... Correct. I'm only doing this because I'm the pretending I'm the seller. seller. I'm pretending protect, I'm the yeah. seller. The so in a normal situation, you won't, you won't do this. I'm just doing this because I'm the seller. Otherwise, uh, if Mo put in the seller's contact here, Something they may nice. get this form and they may get excited that they've sold their house for $2 million. Today, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put in my name as pretend seller. Yeah. I'm going to put in my email address. Now, it's, I'm going to do something really cool, which is you're going to get to see all of the parties' emails. This is going to be especially helpful for those of you who have never used AuthentiSign, so you get to see it. I, was, I mean, again, like I've had a preference towards DocuSign since the beginning. I didn't really like AuthentiSign's user, temp, uh, user interface, but um, I'm getting used to it. Now you're sold. Right? Okay. I'm not completely sold, but I'm getting used to it. What's your email, John? Uh, legal yeah. name? What's my email? Yeah. Are you guys going to spend? JP, you know, here, there yeah, it says JP at jonder.com. Steve at remaxhallmark.com. <laughs> 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 oh, prefer, preferred signature. Uh, JP. And JP is my preferred initials. Add to address, but fine. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay, press save. I guess I'm going to get you on my address. Yeah, yeah. Click on next. Delete them easily. Forms. If you do this properly, as we've taught and as Hus has done for his kit, you will have every single form you need for this transaction, except for what form? Disclosure. Disclosure, because Alex is a agent. An yeah. agent, right? Now, Secret when are you supposed? Agent. Because because we're in our office meeting time, I like doing pop quizzes. When are we supposed to provide the disclosure, the resident disclosure? Before when? we send the offer. Beginning of the offer. Related. When? Before we send the offer. When the, when the deal closes, how many say when the deal closes? No. How many say uh, one year after the deal closes? Well, some agents do that. <laughs> On the anniversary. I've seen On the anniversary of the closing. Or a day before the closing, they Be tell me. Exactly. The reason why we set this up properly is because you have to present the disclosure as per RICO, as per Real Estate Business Brokers Act 2002, prior to the presentation of an offer. So if you're presenting this all together, it should be the first page, and they should sign it. And I want you to be proactive. I need to sign it, and all our managers need to sign it before you actually present it. So fill it, fill it out in advance. With the new web forms, there's no reason not to do this. Fill it out in advance, and then send it to us for signature to sign. And then you can fill in the address. Then you can fill in the address. You can fill in. Well, you got to. No. If you're selling, you got to <laughs> fill in the address in advance. If you're buying, because you know you're you're yeah. putting in the offer, you got to put the address in there. If you know you're you're putting it. In. But the thing with the electronic signatures is so easy now to, to do this and you're not chasing us around to do it. It's just click, you have my email address, Steve at Remax Hallmark, send it, right? Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Uh, John at Remax .com, send it to me, I sign it. Sometimes at 2, 3 a.m. I'm up signing signatures. Oh my God. You don't ask and me no why. for witness. Right? 
No need for witness because it is. Is that why we ran into our office meeting this morning? Is that? Is that why we ran into our office meeting? Is that why we ran into our office meeting? I'm kind of combining it down a little bit. Fun. Right? How many of you want to stop doing this and let's start, just just start our office meeting now? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. This is very Nobody important. wants to do an office meeting. This no, is our, okay. This is our no. office meeting now. This is the office meeting. So all of your forms are here except for registrant's disclosure uh, for dis uh, sorry acquisition of property, right? Yes. Does yes. anybody know what form number that is? No. Four hundred sixty-two. What is it? No, I'm joking. Oh, I, I was going to give you the that's Ferrari if, if you had that. That would have been impressive. Yeah. Do you know it? I don't know. Well. You sure you don't know it either? Can't we just Registrants, it? So disclosure down. of... Uh, okay, well, anyway. Okay, 600. Okay, 600. Okay. Forms. I think 660. 160. 160. Click on the add button for forms because you're on the forms part of the board. Click on add. You don't have to go through all of this stuff. If you know that number, just type in 160. I hope you're right. Yeah, register mm -hmm. disclosure of interest acquisition of property. If you don't know the number, like me, type in either disclosure, which will bring up only these yes. number of forms you can pick, mm -hmm. right? So or type in acquisition. So yes. It won't change the template, it will change the transaction. It will not change, so good question. It will not change the template kits or transaction templates. It will only change this particular transaction. So yeah. if you ever add, need to add forms onto a transaction, and this is why we created a full set, it won't change anything else. And that's the neat thing about this system, whether you're using Korea or WebForms version of it or Trebs, is that you create in the settings. And in the old web forms, you know that if you start editing your kit, it changes. Yeah. That will never happen here. You actually have to go into settings to change yeah. your template kits, yeah. which is better. Yeah. So six, uh, Ontario 160, yeah. we're going to add that. And again, I, I, I don't want to stress this too much, but because we've identified Alex as buyer, and he's going to be the agent, I don't know if we put him in, uh, sorry, House is the agent, uh, him as buyer, when you add this form, it should map. Now, I don't know if Tribison and Authenticide mapped every single form, we're going to find that out more momentarily when we do the actual signature, uh, but it should matter, in my opinion. Click on Next, Documents, Fax, 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 Cover Sheet. How many of you still use a fax machine no, other than me? No. no? I mean, sure? It's mandatory. You can't right? remove it. What I think this is, is... Add a Schedule B, right? Yeah, you can add a Schedule B. I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. The fax back cover sheet, if you ever have to send it by fax, what I believe it is, I've never tried this, is it will create an actual, uh, what do you, whatever you call this, what is it called? A barcode. A barcode, QR, or whatever it is. If you fax this, if, if let's say for example, um, you're dealing with an agent who still uses fax machines and paper, you can actually fax this into that number, and from, my, from what I believe it'll do, it'll come back into the system, electronically. That's what I think it's going to do. I've never tried it though. But I think that's what yeah, this is for. Skip this. Yeah, skip it. Okay, good. It's all not using. Yeah, yeah, nobody's using it. Okay. I did actually. There's an agent I helped. Any yeah. questions? So we schedule, have B. schedule B here. So there are people worse than me. Yeah. So <laughs> I haven't tried adding a schedule B as yet, but let, let me see. I'm not the worst. Form. Form. <laughs> it won't be in form. No, I mean, yeah, you may have to yeah, upload it. Not from here. You have to upload that. So it's yeah. it's likely going to be in documents that you have to upload it separately. Yeah, if you go to the next one, document it shows drag and drop. Okay. In the documents? Yeah, add. No. Ah, yeah. I see. Good. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. Oh, very good. Wow. Thank you very much. So, so drag and drop, stuff. your schedule will be into this, and now it's going to be included as part of the kit. Hmm? Yes. Yeah, drag and drop anytime. It's still going. Is it? For me, and for here too. Just refresh it. Do you think it would map the places that you have to fill up the schedule B's? Like, if it's like a... That I don't know. We haven't tried the schedule B. Yeah, uh, actually, no, I don't think it will. Because yeah, remember, you're uploading... Yeah. Because you're uploading yeah. a schedule B from uh, a listing. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it's not going to map schedule B's. Is, there, is everybody ready to have a little bit of fun now with this? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And get the signatures. Yeah. So only two more things to do. One is we're going to go through now the signature process in this uh, yes. sign. Yes. And then after that, I'm going to show you a really fun feature. How many of you, and again, you're going to be on camera, just to give you a bit of preview. You're on record. Okay. You're on record. Yes. When you give us a listing, how many of you provide the MLS data information form signed by your buyers, by, by, signed by your sellers? Everybody's hand. Everybody's hand should be up. Just, just pretend. Just put your hands up. Come on. You're going to get me in trouble for not... 
I'm going to show, I'm going to just give you a little bit of a preview because it's going to, going to be really neat. With this Tribasin at a fence sign, you'll be able to fill out the MLS data information once, and you don't have to copy and paste it into a broker load. You can click one button, and it's going to upload into a draft whatever you put on that MLS data information form. Does that sound neat? We're going to do that after we do these signatures. Okay, we're done. <coughs> well, now the question is, how do we get signatures? Yeah, yeah. Right? Design. Okay. Fax them to come over. <laughs> Let them so go into the hamburger menu. This is where you got to now understand your um, navigation. There's two ways. If you're going from the dashboard, you'll have to go either into the transaction desk to pull up that transaction, or you go to attempt to sign. Right? I'm going to show you both ways to do it. If you click on transaction desk, you'll be able to pull up this transaction, 425 Drury Avenue. And you're going to be able to click on this menu here and click on sign in. Okay? Or if you click on the transaction kit, kit on this side menu here, you can click on sign in. Or you can click on authentic sign here. And it's going to say there's nothing there, of course, because you haven't put this into the signing yet. You click on add, signing name. You're going to put Alex whatever it is, or for the transaction, if you, uh, in, if there's multiple parties that you're involved with, I would just put in the transaction name. But then you see here, your transaction appears. If you've done this properly, it'll appear. Now I know that we did this a little bit of, a little bit quickly. Go back and watch the video, right? But basically you've got multiple ways to get the signature. Within the transaction kit, you've got two ways. And on the sign, you've got one way. So it's about three ways that you can get the signatures. Which way do you want to do it? Transaction. transaction through the transaction yeah. okay so because we're going to do it through the transaction yeah, I'm just going to show you if you don't do it that way and you click on attempt to sign because I, I know I'm going to get this question asked a lot I go into my attempt to sign to get these signatures but there's no there's nothing here that's because you haven't done a signing yet once you've done the signing it's going to appear here but you would go into attempt to sign click on add come up with a name for the signature for the signature uh, process and then 425 Drury Avenue you select it there we're going to do it instead though from the transaction desk so click on transaction desk click on 425 Drury on the right side of the page click on signings there's no signings so click on add and what are we going to do is signing name we'll, we'll put Alex yeah has to be Alex no it is going to be Alex yeah the buyer because first. remember this the is buyer us signs representing first. Alex so yeah, Alex Maponi, 425 Drury Avenue. Click on new signing, yes, click on save. Now it's gonna add the signing process. It's gonna open up this screen. Do you have your phone with you? I do. <laughs> you have your check with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those of you familiar with Incident Authentic Sign, you're gonna know this because it's very familiar with this some, something you've done. <laughs> For those of you that this is brand new, I want you to go with me step by step. Step one is a detailed signing name. We put Alex McConian, 425 Drury Avenue, participant order sign in line, which means they're in order. Husband, wife, or wife, husband. That's, that would be a Simul sign would be first come, first serve. Whoever signs it first signs it. Yeah. Now, here's ways to use that. If it's Hus, Alex, Mrs. Alex, right? If they do Simul sign, all three of them get it all at once. If they do sign in line, it might be, you know, Mrs. Alex first, Mr. Alex, and then us. This is the same with DocuSign. You can set the signing order or have everybody sign all at once. But we're going to ignore this accept counter offer for now. You can actually set an expiration date that if they do not sign it by a certain time, it expires. And this is really neat. Send a reminder. You know how you're chasing down your yeah. clients. Oh, you haven't signed it yet. This will auto remind them. After you can four hours. After yeah. four hours, you yeah. can even so set it to four see. minutes. <laughs> Four minutes. You're hounding them. Okay, what's going on? You're really in a rush. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, four hours is the minimum, actually. So I, I thought it was going to be. I always use simul sign. Yeah. Simul sign? Okay, yeah. okay. So we'll do simul sign. Okay. Uh, then the sign ID position is where that little tag appears. So, participants. So, this is a very important page to note because you're either going to have all of the emails for the parties or not. In this case, the neat thing about this is if the listing agent wants to do this through Trebs Internet Authentisign, you can actually specify that here so that once all of your signatures are done, it just goes to the listing agent 
and the seller. So in the future, there may actually be an actual transaction desk where all parties are a part of that transaction. Instead of you sign, download email, they sign, download email back and forth. Everybody, I mean, the whole idea behind the system design, I think, is for everybody to just be a part of one transaction uh, altogether, buyer, seller, and their agents. You sign so, that's, yeah. so if you want to be very efficient at this in the future, call the listing agent, hey, do you want to do this on transaction desk? Yeah, okay, uh, put, in your, you know, put in your information, uh, listing agent's information, seller's information, then everybody gets to sign it, mm. right? Now the different roles that the different roles that are available is reviewer, remote signer, buyer, you know, buyer, seller, all that sort of thing. Here? We're going. Sorry. How do you add like more email here now? Can you add it here or no? Um, I believe you can. Well, I mean, you can click on it and edit it. I believe I haven't tried that yet. Do you need uh, to have the two have have agents the, on? What's that? Do you need to have the two agents selling? They're agents? they're uh, well, they're the listing agents, so they will be on here because they're going to appear on the form. But the question was, you know, how do you add this information? Remember when we were adding contacts? So if you foresee in the past, like in the Wizards, we were adding contacts. If you foresee in the future that you want to create a transaction desk where the listing agent is also there and the seller is also there, add them to the contacts. I mean, call the listing agent for permission to do that. If you added them to the contacts and added their email addresses, it will appear here. But because we're doing this on just this side for now, and we're going to pretend that once we have this offer, we'll email it to Mo, and then Mo can do whatever he wants with it. Uh, it's going to be a bit different. So we're going to add Alex, Huss, and myself as the signers here. Notice that Huss is, by default, is just a reviewer. If you're a reviewer, you'll only be able to review the file. You won't be able to sign on it. <coughs> in-person signer means that person is sitting in front of you, and they're going to sign in person. And so the platform will prompt them to sign on the spot. Remote signer means they will email so I'm going to set all of these three to remote signers. So you have a buyer, you have a Huss, you have myself, yes. Can we do one of them as a in-person signer? Okay, why not? Uh, Alex will be, that's a good question. So we can give this feature a try. Alex will be the in-person signer, okay? Uh, Huss, you'll get this by email. I'm going to get it by email as well. But also, just a point, that if you are a reviewer, <laughs> uh, the, the complete transaction will not be complete until you review it and accept it. So you will not, it won't be complete until you review it. You review it. Yeah. Okay. If you're a reviewer, you're still part of this. Still have to do something. Can you put me as a reviewer? Okay. Um, actually, you know, we'd have to go back. Oh. We'd have to go back. Uh, you know, so if you don't have my email address, maybe because it's courting. We, because we didn't do, we didn't do it in the contacts. Remember the contacts oh. part of the wizard? Yeah. So we'll, we'll save that if, if everybody's okay with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys can play around with that if you want. <coughs> uh, we'll save that, but that's a good, uh, that's a good point actually. So now we're going to add participants to it. Now, for whatever reason, there's a hand here address on got Alex because we're missing required signature. Uh, so I need Alex's email address. What's your email address, Alex? Uh, Alex Malconian at Trevnet.com. No, no, no. You already put that reason, in. Sorry, the reason why is because this is an in-person in signer. He said, yeah, I'm person. So um, I've never tried this. So why don't we just simplify and have you as a remote for now? Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Just for now. Let's go back. So, so yeah, if you add Mo, you can add his email too, right? Yeah. I would have had to do it in the context no, 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 before. That, that, if you add him here, then you will ask him to put an email. You know what? You know what? You know, that's a good point. That's yeah, just, that's, just that's that. why I wanted to have the in-person signings because I've never figured out how yeah, to we do never, it. Yeah, we haven't done that, but for the sake yeah. of our example today, let's... let's uh, okay, so let's add Mo. Good point. We'll do remote signer. You're right. Thank you very much. So if you're listing, if the listing agent says, "Hey, put me onto the, put me onto this transaction," I'll sign it. Um, put my seller. Remember, I'm the seller, and I'm already in this transaction. Just for example, say, so. uh, Mo, what's your email address? Uh, M O. Dot Ascarian at Gmail. So save participant. Okay, so now we're all clear with that. You see the check mark there? Step three yeah. is the documents. Now, here's the thing that you've got to know. I'm not going to add every single document onto this. The reason why is because you're not waiving anything, you're not notice of fulfilling anything, you're not doing any of that sort of thing. In the initial round, what do we do? We need working with a realtor. Now again, because the, the roles are defined, only the people who are relevant to each role will receive those documents. So Mo will not see 
the buyer rep working with realtor because it's not relevant to him. That's not part of his role. Really? I won't see it either, right? Only Alex will see it in Huss. Buyer rep, confirmation of co-op, offer summary document. We're going to skip uh, FinTrack for now because I know a lot of you don't do your FinTrack, right? Oh, Susan will want that. Well, 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 if you don't do your well, Susan will yeah, drive so you crazy. I'm just, I'm just playing around. <laughs> oh. Agreement of purchase and sale. Yes. Uh, what else did we say? Re uh, registrants, disclosure of interest. That's the first round of this offer that we're going to do. Is that fair? Yeah, can we change the sequence with the agreement first? Let me see. Yes. You can. Well, we can. Yes, you can. You can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But it has to be done in the it's other. Be done in the so, you're this to the now so we've taken from our kit, we're adding it to this particular yeah. transaction. It's going to create all of this, it's going to do all this fun stuff now. Oh, yes. Our battery is. Yeah. So, if we want to add the buyer, before, we have to do the transaction from before and then we add the address and everything. You want to do the buyer agreement before <coughs> so many people. Uh, yes, so if you want to do any of this before you actually do an offer, which is the proper way, by the way, you're supposed to establish that yeah. first, then you do your working with realtor, buyer rep, and all of that sort of stuff in advance. However, because they're already part of that kit, yeah. now to do an offer, you just open that transaction kit and now you click on the offer. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, John, are you going to you gonna do design uh, pay? Yes. So, Documents are done. You got three check marks so far. Yes. If you send them together to the uh, buyer to sign, can you separate the buyer agency afterwards? I haven't tried that way. I think that if you're sending it as a kit, the whole yeah, kit yeah. will be sent. So I haven't tried it yet that way. So you have to send them separately. You may have to. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't see. There's a lot of different variations. These are good questions because there's a lot of variations to this, and that's why I'm glad we're doing it together. So all the documents are now done. Uh, step number four is design. This is where all the signatures show up. This is a 15-page document. So just bear with me as we go through this. Now here's the magic. You ready? Bam. Who can do a good, uh, who's that guy that does BAM on TV? Wait, what's go back up. Huh? Wow. But, but why does working huh? with the <laughs> have two O signs? I'm going to show you in a minute. But Emerald. you ready for the magic? Yeah. yeah. That's great. There you go. All your signatures are mapped on every single page. And who signs All work? through, through the entire transaction. Everything. Now, Melissa asked a very good question. Why are they, why am I, for example, as a seller, have both representing interest and not representing interest. Trep Incident Authenticine doesn't know everything. It doesn't know what you intend to do here. So you still have to go and check and make sure that it is appropriate. But hey, versus going through and, every, and mapping every single signature yourself, deleting where they're not supposed to initial is an easier process. Mm -hmm. And this is the only page where this happens anyway. Plus the does not and does uh, on the uh, contact after expiry, it does and does not delete, yeah. right? So, you just, okay, so I'm going to show you that in a moment. One thing to remember and why I chose to go through the Treb Incident Authentication demo today is that Kriya's web forms does not currently have this feature. So yes, you can integrate DocuSign to Kriya's, Kriya's uh, web forms, but it does not do the mapping as of right now, at least. So if you're using, the only difference is if you're using Kriya's web forms, you have to map this out yourself, mm -hmm. which if you're dealing with 15 pages versus here, it's already done for you, mm -hmm. right? Now keep in mind, this is just the initial signatures pages, meaning when you do sign backs, counter offers, changes, you still have to do that part manually. I think in the future, they'll have probably uh, a way to do counter offers, offers, counter offers electronically. That's, I don't know how many years away, but right now, what to keep in mind is that everything has been mapped. So now you can imagine if all of you, buyer, seller, listing agent, cooperating brokerage, if all of you have come together and say, let's do this entire thing together on uh, Treb's Incident Authenticine, you could actually have everybody on the table and sign everything, whether or not they're in like literally in person or wherever they happen to be. Now, how do you delete? So for example, as seller, I want to delete, right? Here's a flaw, however. Remember that Alex is the buyer, I am the seller. This is what you have to be careful about. It knows where to map the fields, but Alex and I would never sign the same working with a realtor. No, exactly. Right? So you've got it. This is where you start separating these things. 
yeah. right? Again, I mean, it, it, it's doing what it can do, but just keep in mind there's a couple of things you've got to be mindful about. And yes. what Alex signs is However, fine, yes. it's not for everybody else to see. Exactly. However, so you got to be careful with that part of the process. Now, I haven't actually done you know, everybody in together, so that's something that we've got to try. Uh, but just be mindful of that. Still, just do your side of the transaction first uh, before you If you want to add a sign signature, one at a time. For each part, if you have a sign for example, bag, I one, 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 one at a time. Sorry, more first. Uh, <laughs> if you go on disclosure <laughs> form, yes. uh, there is, you need to put, for example, yes. Alex's signature. Yes. How you can do it. So, Alex's signature on a disclosure form, right? I mean, this is Hus. Hus. Yeah, Hus. Interesting. So, there's a couple of. There's a couple of little glitches that this has experienced. So, for example, Hus is here instead of so Alex as the agent, um, right? Oh, so actually, on mine it turned out correct. It turned out correct on yours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, a couple of glitches in this, in this particular stage, right? How do you add initial if you want to just add initial? Okay. So, I'll show you how to do that. So, just just keep keep in mind, we're all learning this together at this pace. There may be some glitches or things that we find wrong with it. So just because it does something like this, where it maps everything out, doesn't mean you don't have to do your work anymore. Yeah. Make sure you're, remember, uh, these are techies that designed this. And so while they're trying to make everything easier, and, and sometimes it tends to be complicated, in an actual real estate transaction, you may, you may see where this registrant disclosure is actually Huss. Why? Because the system thinks Huss is the agent. Therefore, the person putting in a disclosure would have been the agent. So it doesn't know that Alex is the one so you can't edit this on the spot and if you did it wouldn't look right so in an example like this I'd manually put that form in and manually edit it so that well, it's Alex you name. could go to the markup and cross it out and yeah. just it doesn't that look, it doesn't look good I wouldn't do it so that how way. do you delete you didn't yeah, finish that software. how do you delete yeah. okay. how do you delete that part you didn't so finish that. That's, that's at the very good. any one of these is clickable Oh, okay. And so just press button, yeah. the delete button. Yeah. Uh, so here, this this one is totally wrong. So I would delete my name off of this completely, and this would be Alex's working with the realtor. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. And buyer rep could delete one. is Alex. Is how the do buyer. you add? How do you add signature? Or, uh, how do you add? Okay. Yeah. So now, with this page, for those of you who are used in uh, AuthenDesign, you'll know how to do it. But for those of you who don't, you click on drag and drop. Yeah. It's going to open up. The various options of the different signatures and initial fields that you can do and you simply just so for example if I need a buyer initial here <coughs> initial and just drop this it. Is uh, right there. and I'll tell you what I'll tell you what sorry remember you, you have to choose who you the signer is yeah. so in this case it would be Alex uh, okay. and then you would drag his signature uh, initial there that's how you do that that makes sense yes. any other questions <coughs> yes. what do you counter ones can we, we have to use AuthenticSign or we can use uh, DocuSign or whatever? You can use, so you can go back and forth, but that creates a confusing thing for your clients because if they're used to one platform, they might say, you know, okay, what's a DocuSign and all that sort of thing. It is easy enough to go back and forth, but either way, you should be good, right? So for counter offer, do we need to log into, like, because we use the DocuSign, we have app everything. Now we want to use this, does it have an app? Yes. Does it have a website that we need to log in? How does it AuthenticSign does not have an app. AuthenticSign, you do have to log in here. And then upload the And document. then upload the document. So those are the pitfalls of using this. Now, so I, I get it. If you use AuthenticSign for this and then DocuSign for the future ones, I get why you'd want to do that. I would, uh, ditch, the, I would ditch that. I mean, that, that's personal opinion as to... As, what I'd recommend is if you're going to use AuthenticSign, do it AuthenticSign. If you're going to use DocuSign, use Korea's web forms and do everything through... But the only real difference between that in terms of signatures is you have to map out signatures. If you're using Korea's for it, might as well use it. Okay. Will, Korea, Korea. Uh, will Korea form be available from January 1st yeah. on? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's there already. Yeah, it's already. I know, but it seems like they're merging and it's going to disappear or something. No, no. So and, uh, when we finish off, I'll tell you what to do with your forms. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, I have a question. So where, you had, where you had, and you said a name. Yes. It's Huss's name, but yes. it should have been yes. Alex, I yes. think. So the whole form is, okay. you should just delete it. So my it question is, can you not delete that form? And yeah, yeah. You can't delete anything on that form because it's already in the signature mm -hmm. spot. You so cannot, before... I mean, the name yeah. at the top. So what could have, what should have been done, actually, is when we were creating the signatures in the forms page, we should have changed yeah. at that point. 
But remember, like this, there's a lot of different features here that even I haven't. It's going to be a lot of. It's going to be a lot of word. That's why I want you to do it now, right? So Jenny, and then us. Um, I'm looking at the agreement of purchase and sale, and it's two million dollars. Yes. But it doesn't have the written to you. So okay. So the question, yeah, the question is, you know. The right thing to do, I mean, I skipped a couple steps here. The right thing to do is before you send the forms for signature, we should have gone into the forms and checked I mean, everything. Individual. Right, individual. I, I didn't do that stuff. Yeah. Right? So remember when we were in a transaction wizard? Guys, listen, please. When we were in the transaction wizard and there was a form section, that's where all the changes should have been. So yes, you still have to go through the forms and check to make sure everything is okay. I didn't go through that just to get things video. things going but you you have to go to the forms and i'll show you how to go back anyway and, and fix this in case you okay. found something wrong Has if we have a sign back mm -hmm. uh and s initialing and signing and all of that yeah can we use the forms the sign back forms like tra uh aria has them i think uh, instead of, of scratching and yes, signing, just doing. Do I've form. never, I've, done, I've never done it that way. I don't know how many of you have done it that way, but yeah, that um, might work yeah. with the signature. Okay, so that's something we gotta explore in the future. Yes, Vito. Uh, do we go through the Korea today too? No, we're not gonna have time to do that at this point. So, what I recommend you to do, uh, the question was, can we do the Korea? I mean, it's already been an hour. Uh, these things usually more than an hour. Actually, these things take a lot of time okay, yeah. to put together. If you go to Korea's. The, the, the navigation is the same. So if you try this on Korea, you'll get the same results. The only difference is number one, you won't have signature mapping. Right, so Korea, you can do everything that you see in this video, but you won't have signature mapping. Number two, the final feature I'm gonna show you today, which is upload of listing, you won't be able to do that on Korea. Those are the only two differences. Everything else is the same. Everything because else is I come today because of the Korea. You told me come tomorrow. Yeah. I cannot show up. Again, my apologies, guys. And this is the first session I'm running of nine different sessions. And just planning these things out, as you can see, because we're such a huge group, so many different things will come up. I can't do everything all at once. We I apologize. May need a repeat. <coughs> you may need a repeat. Yeah. So, so my question yeah. is that can I give you my number? Just show us how to go to the double sign after because transaction. We'll do our uh, we'll finish up, we'll do our office meeting. Because I want you to promote your listings and all that sort of thing, and talk about the things that you that, that you want to talk about. And if we have time, we'll, we'll go into that. Yeah. Again, with Korea and Treb, it's the same navigation. So everything that I've done on Treb, you can do on Korea. I'll show that to you at the end, uh, like after our office meeting. But it's exactly the same. The only difference is, like functionality-wise, you don't do you don't have signature mapping and you don't have um, uh, direct upload of listings. Can you show how the markup is work? Like for example, okay. if so we have a sign back, we want to just change the price. I need to cross it out. So how? So here's how markup works. Let's say for example, like you go to here and hot water tank turns out not to be your rental. Yeah. You go to the line and you, cross this first. and you can cross it out. Right? And if so I want to write it down, if you want to write down something else, click on text. And then just put. And this text is different than the other one. For example, hot water tank holder. This is an example. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Where is the save? Where is the save? Yeah. And if you're doing this through the signatures, it will save it oh, okay. until you press the next. Okay, thank you. Does this make sense for everybody? I know, you know what, it is a lot. Now you, you now you realize why we're doing this now as opposed to next year. No, what she was right? saying, yes. what she was saying, if if you didn't want to send it by yes. done, you want to save it, then you have to put the back button. Yeah, you have to go to the back button. Back button that says save yeah. and continue. Yeah, save and continue. Yeah. So we okay. don't have to anymore renew our membership with DocuSign. So before you decide what to do with DocuSign, just keep in mind, Korea's web forms will work with DocuSign and you can integrate it. You just have to be able to map out the signatures. It all depends on which platform you prefer to use. DocuSign has an app. I'm gonna keep my DocuSign because that's how I sign your mutual releases, cancellations and everything. I'm keeping that. Um, I'm probably gonna be using both platforms. I wouldn't recommend, like for 150 or whatever it is we pay for DocuSign, it's, it's, it's a tax write, right? So we click on next. And then now we send invitations to everybody. And then that's it. We sent the signatures for everybody. Now two things just to just to recap. Number one, 
we didn't go through the offer with a fine tooth comb. I know every single one of you as professional realtors would have done that. Uh, number two, there's a couple of features here that we just had to uh, kind of skip through just for the sake of showing you this as an example. What I urge you to do is go through every single step of this, uh, pretend you're working with a buyer, pretend you're working with a seller, just go through it so that you're familiar with what's going on. Because the last thing you want happening is come January, you're in the middle of an offer and you have no idea what to do with it. Because aside from using paper, like a, a paper offer, this is your only option, this and Korea. Next year. So in January, we can still use Korea to do our own. Korea web forms, but not the web forms you know yeah. and you're using right yeah, now. Yeah, it's it's going to look okay. like this. Okay. What about okay. printable forms? Yeah, the blanks. Printable forms, you can still go in as forms and print it out. It's the same thing. You can still oh, print you forms. Can. You can still print. Can. You can still type and you can print. So all the same thing, printing, PDF, downloads, all that, you're still accessible to. Can okay. we upload our old uh, transactions to... I'm going to touch upon that um, when we finish up. Anybody else have any questions? Yes? Yeah. So when you say the ones which are I'm going off, yes. can you go back and say, like, which ones are going off? You said Korea web forms are going off after yes. the 31st yes. December. Yes. I'll, you show you that in, I'll show you that. Skip. I'll show you that. Yes. Any questions? Yes. Yes. We have just one more thing. Yeah. Yes. 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 Can I add something? For example, when to do agreement purchases. Can you guys listen, please? Let's listen. Yeah. Yes. So just um, addition. So I took the training, and there are some things about the system. For example, you do agreement purchase of sale, and you like to add many closes, right? So one page can fit just five closes, no more. You do seven, you're gonna lose two, the last one, five. You have to add another page and include more closes, as many as you wish, but five per page. So Makes if sense. you don't know this secret, you do, and you lose your closes, you're not happy, right? You say, oh my God, it's like, took my closes somewhere. So there are some oops, but if you know why, like you know it's very smart, you can easily fix it. Just add another page, do another five, add another page, add another five, and you save. Do as many closes so as look, you So look know. back to, thank you very much, so look back to the video where we covered that earlier. Um, remember when I tried to put 10 closes? Yeah. And it had to scroll, right? And then we cut and paste the yeah. five. That's exactly what Natalia is talking about. So refer to the video. the first five? The last one, the last because one. that's what's going to the next page. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So you're going through the signatures now, Alex? Yeah, I signed yeah. it. Okay, you signed it, Huss, did you sign for it? For some reason, I got <laughs> Huss's, I got a pen to sign for Huss to sign. Oh, oh. so much information, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I signed and deleted mine. Where's Huss? I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> why? Oh, because this is coming from Huss. <coughs> yeah, but it's to my email. Oh, because Huss oh. is the agent. Oh, sorry. Is so multiple Huss, people yeah. are sending me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I got That's a few okay. people sending me. All right, Huss is the oh, agent. Sent me, sent yeah, okay, Huss okay. is the agent. He's sending yes. you. Okay. okay. All right. So then the signatures, they're going through the signatures as you would normally do it on the attempt to sign. Right? Let's see how it looks like. Hold on, Alex, accept it, man. I'm there trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> Start. <laughs> click. 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 There's a lot to sign here. Right? <laughs> and John, the ring is complete. Is it coming on the Gmail attachment or something? It's the okay. not denied. Which one? When it's completed, everyone sign it. Yes, you all get the email. You should all get yeah, the email. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for your signature. My signature? <laughs> <laughs> because he did, I did. And then you're going to present it? And Jonder, when you sign, you're saying you won't see the BRA or working with a realtor. Is that correct? When you sign, you won't when see... When you sign. When I sign? You won't see so the BRA. So I've never, I've never tried it to this scale before, and we're getting a lot of questions. I'm just going through some of the questions right now. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that are going to come up. There's a lot of things that are going to come up. And it's just a matter of going through it over the next couple of weeks. I don't want you to get caught up with it too, too much, because focus on... I mean, right now, connecting with your clients, enjoying the holiday season, but do take it seriously in terms of what we need to do in order for this to happen. I'm still, again, this is one thing where we're all on the same level. Like, I, the only difference with me between me and you guys now is I've, only, I've done this a couple of times, but there's new questions. There's a lot of brilliant questions that are coming up. So if we're doing multiple kits, will everybody start to see each other's kits and all that sort of thing, right? Um, and so it's going to be very... It's, it's, a, it's a journey. It's a learning process that we're going to be 
that we're going to be going through together. Okay, so in the next coming weeks, again, tomorrow I'm doing the same session uh, in Richmond Hill, but based on today's session, we're going to be able to, to, to answer those questions. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be at uh, 1 o'clock. Thank you. And then next week I'm doing it in Aurora before, uh, during our office meeting. Um, some of the questions that we have, uh, Kriya, you know what? How many of you guys are still okay to keep going? I know we have our office meeting. Keep going? Are you sure? I don't want to take away from the office meeting time either. You're going to be okay? Yeah. Okay, so as a bonus... We only have one listing. We running. just sold on two. Okay, we just sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a bonus, yeah. as a bonus we'll, do, we'll touch on Korea. I'm, tell, I'm telling you right now, it's exactly the same, but I'm going to show it to you. But with only functionality case. changes. Yes. Now, I, I so go I want to ask Mo. Mo, you didn't receive the buyer representation, though, right? As a listing agent, he didn't, he didn't receive the buyer. I haven't received anything. He didn't need no. Receive, oh, we, didn't he, 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 we didn't include Mo in this. We didn't include Mo. We simplified this. Like, so there's a lot of, again, a lot of variations with this. It's a new system. You're driving it. It's like, it's like driving. Guys, get your stuff together. <laughs> your stuff. <laughs> it's like driving a car one day and the next day you're expected to fly a space shuttle. How many of you have flown a space show? Well, oh, it's not quite that complicated. <laughs> but there's a lot of different things that that's going to be. So I, there's a couple of questions here that we have from everybody else who's watching us. Um, and I'm glad we're going through it with them. Um, are we going to do Korea? We're going to do Korea. Eric's asking, Eric Scoggins asking me to show what I'm wearing. Uh, Should we show? <laughs> uh, Peter Carpen, uh, the names of transaction kits are there, but they're empty. Um, we're gonna to have to look into to what what that's why that's doing that. Uh, option of that. Ari Zadigan, I have an option of ownership. What's that, uh, Ari? You're gonna to have to speak with me. I, I want to figure out what that question is. Uh, okay, Sebastian, thank you for your comment. Uh, what else? Form one twenty seven from Steve. That was earlier. Uh, where did you get click? Where did you click to get all the clauses? Nushin, I'll show you in the video um, when we cover Kriya. You know what? Because we're gonna do Kriya now, I'll cover that as well. Where to get clauses? Let's see what else. Sarah, hey, how's it going? Uh, Anna Narasimhan, what if we have two buyers or sellers? Uh, if you have two buyers, you add a, a second buyer as a party. So in this example, we only had Alex as the buyer. You'd add a second buyer under the contacts. We'll do. We'll try that in the Korea example. Uh, you had you add another contact as buyer. You add another contact as seller, and then they will become parties. The real more, more complicated part of this is what if you have four buyers or four sellers? Once you get to that stage, you have to do manual adding of signature fields uh, and contacts. Uh, what else? If you're doing multiple? If you're doing multiple? Representation. Representation. You're not allowed anymore. Not allowed anymore. <laughs> what, what's the question, though? Can you see both? I've never, I haven't, so I haven't tried yet. I haven't tried yet how to do a multiple, multiple, like there's a lot of scenarios here that we're going to come up with that we haven't tried, like I haven't tried on the system. Right now you're seeing what so far we've explored and, and what we're looking for, uh, what we're looking for, for being able to learn. I'm going to do two more things, if everybody's still okay with that. Uh, you finish the signatures? Yeah, you guys I finish did. the signatures and everything? Okay. You send it back? So let's go back to the transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the dashboard. In our transactions, we've got 425 Drury Avenue. And let's click back on signings. Uh, it's still in progress, so somebody yeah, still has to sign you, you need to sign. You. Oh, I need to sign? Yeah, you, you already signed. Oh, my phone is, is. Oh, you're right. my phone is being used. Don't worry about it. Let's see what it's done. Hey, hold on, hold on. He doesn't need to look at it because he, he no, sent he it. No, you have to look. You have to refuse it. I have to sign. I'm the seller. You have to I guess sign I as a listing broker, yes. So here, for the sake of example, I'm pulling up the signature. Anna, can we delete practice kits? I believe you can. So I'm going to go to the signatures now as a seller. Okay, so let's see now if this works. Let's refresh it. There you go. We're done? So you're done. Now Hus is uh, left. Okay, Hus. It's on you now. <laughs> so Alex is helping us.
Was Russ a reviewer or has a real reviewer or sign up? Okay, so Huss is the only one who has to sign. So on the authentic sign dashboard, you're going to see what kind of type of signature it is, whether it's authenticated and whether it's signed. So you'll know which party hasn't signed yet. Put the camera on. Put the camera on what? Put the camera on the party who hasn't signed yet. <laughs> He's done? You can see this. Okay. Done. Okay. That's quick. Yeah. That's what he just did. I, I just I figured it out. It was actually pretty fairly simple. So now everything's done. All, all parties. I did it differently. You could do it that way, but I did it different. I went back to the forms, changed them, and re-added it. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I think I saw a couple of troubleshooting tips. I think I saw what Alex is referring to, that he got an email from Mo and from us. Yeah. yeah. Because I got the same thing. That, I don't know why that's happening. This no, no, because I sent him. Yeah, because I he did, sent I did too. Yeah. How did you send him? I added his email address, your email address. So I was double in. Oh, okay. Yeah, he just did another that's transaction. That's why that's happening. Okay, so just disregard what we just did. So that we don't have to, you that didn't that get the file representation. I'm waiting, okay. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. You're waiting to see. You kind of messed it up. No, it's missing. <laughs> okay, so now we have on this page all the documents have been signed. Are you still going? Uh, all the documents have been signed. And you have the certificate of the the legality of these signatures being signed. Right, so now it's legal. Now, Alex, congratulations, you bought property. Oh, boy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you put it in the commission, but anyway. Really uh, get I gotta go, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Go get your $100,000 deposit, bring it into the office. Okay, so that's done. Does everybody get this part of the transaction? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, again, we're just, we're all just on the same page here, starting to learn this. There will be a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different ways things can go wrong. Please pair up, partner, work on this in groups, just as just like you would be doing your role plays or your dialogues. Because I want you to get this out of the way, so that you focus on the most important thing next year, which is buying what and selling. Selling. buying and selling. Yeah. You, you notice that money making. You know, I made this mandatory, but whenever we're doing objection handling or prospecting classes, I don't even get the room this full. This is very important because once you know how to do the technology aspect of this, you focus on making money. That's, that's what I want you to focus on, connecting with your buyers and sellers, you know, helping them out. I don't want you to get hung up on the details of this. And so, you know, work with each other, pretend you're selling each other's listings, but please run through these scenarios so that you know how to use this solidly by January so that you focus on the most important things. I'm going to show you one more thing on the TREB, um, uh, the TREB's uh, incident of and design, and then I'm going to do a brief... Uh, tour about the Korea so that you see what I'm talking about as far as similarities, as long as everybody's still okay. Does anybody want to talk about their listing or you want to keep going? Keep going. Keep going? Keep going. Keep going. You sure? Yeah. Nobody's selling anything? <laughs> Nobody's the question anything? is that if you mastered this, yeah. do you really care about the Korea? Uh, so for the sake, I mean, to be fair, I did promise Vita. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I did promise a couple of you that would, but you know what I mean? Like this is, I, I estimated this would be a one hour session. It's not. And so, I'm doing my best in terms of what, what has come up just to make sure everybody's on the same page. So there's a time constraint. I will show you Kriyas because yes, it will be pretty much the same process, but I want you to be familiar with the Kriya look and feel of it. I want to show you what you can and cannot do on the Kriya platform. And I want to show you that everything we've done here, you're not going to find it on Kriyas. So everything we're doing for us here, if you were to log in to web forms next year and it's looking for everything we've just done, he's not going to find it. Because those two systems don't talk to each other. Mm. So this is where you kind of have to choose which one you want to uh, go with. So if I go with this one, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And I already you can, you can use off. both if you want, but there wouldn't really be a, a reason to. There, 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 aside from the two differences in, in functionality uh, and, and web form clauses and all that sort of thing, which I'll show you in a bit. The last thing I'm going to show you here. So, so what we've done is we created the transaction kit templates. Uh, you have to make seven more of them. All of you have to make eight more of them. Uh, we've taken a transaction template, put it into an actual transaction, uh, modified the forms, added the signatures to it, sent the signatures out. We got it signed. We have a sold conditional now. Congrats to Mo. Alex, bring in your $100,000, please. 
Um, otherwise, you know, I'm always going to be calling you. <laughs> Get it back on the MLS. We have all the documents here. Every party to this transaction, you've received, you've received all of the the uh, forms, right? Everybody's got the forms. You've got them all signed and everything. And so that's pretty much done. Now it goes into counter offers and all that sort of thing. If there is, um, and all the modif all, all the modifications of these forms are just going to be pretty much as normal. Like you know, when you get sign backs, you've got to annotate. You've got to what do you call it? Mark it up. Signatures back and forth. All of that sort of process. It's the same as what you've already been used to. Yeah. Except it's a different platform. <coughs> the last thing I want to show you on Trebs Internet Authenticine, and then we'll go to Korea. Yeah. Uh, real quick is how to broker load directly from an MLS data information form. So what this does, it saves you the process of having to copy and paste uh, a listing from an MLS data information form, and then you know you click on a broker load, then you copy paste, or your assistants copy paste, and sometimes you don't copy, you can't copy paste, so you have to do it manually. On Trebs, Internet Authentisign, and so far Korea doesn't have this, so this is something you may want to pay attention to. On Trebs Incident Authentic Design, you are able to direct upload into a draft from an MLS data information form. We're going to use Pess's platform just as an example for now. Does anybody have a printout of an actual listing? No? We'll try this MLS. We are all paperless. We'll try the same thing again. We're all paperless. <laughs> Good. Okay. Because we haven't created a transaction kit for the freehold listings, I want to show you how to do this manually, just so that, you know, let's say, for example, uh, you want to put something together, you have no idea how to how to create it. I'm going to show you how to create manually an MLS data information form only from a standalone form so that if you're planning to broker load and let's say you have your working with the realtor and everything else signed and you only needed the MLS data information form, I'm just going to show you the specific function of how to create the MLS data information form and upload it into a draft. Does that make sense? Uh, Hassan I may need you to log in again later, but yeah, actually, you log, can you log in again? Yeah. You don't mind. Excuse me. Just so for you. Just so we have everything ready to go. So we're in. Oh, I should have something. John, yes. I think it's good to say there's also uh, phone support. You yes. can call Authentisign. Thank you, Alex. And they can talk you through it. The phone, the phone number to call when you have issues with Internet Authentisign is not my number. Oh, thank you very much, Alex. We're going to give you the phone number. I'm not going to give you my phone number. Is it a direct number? If you need support. Yeah, number, if you need support. Yeah. I mean, of course, sure you can reach out to me. Trip, but the reason why I'm taking a proactive step is because I want you to know at least 80 to 90% of this. And if here's, here's the difficulty with dealing with a system like this, right? You know, you're in January to 10 p.m., you call, you're having problems with the offer, you call me and I don't have access to a computer at that time for whatever reason, I can't see what you're seeing. And so you'd have, even if you described everything on your page, I wouldn't know what to do at that point, unless we do a remote desktop connection or whatever. Um, Trev's team, I don't know if they're 24 seven either, but Trev's team does have support hours or whatever it is, but you can call them if you need any support. And all you have to do is click on this question yeah, mark here. And there's live support. There's actually online training. Can anybody guess how many hours Trev's courses for Trev Incident Authenticine? How many hours? Five, six, six. six. That's four. Is it six Two. now? Six. Six. Yeah, it's four hours. Wow. I'm just guessing. Do you know how many pages the manual is for this, for what I'm teaching you? 200. 200 pages. I have a copy of it if any of you want it. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Uh, right? I'll take it. However, you can go to live support, online training, help videos. Please watch this video, go through the support, all that fun stuff. One more thing before we go into Korea. Can you and, call Trev to get help? Uh, call, like, go to go to the support button here. I don't know if, if Trev's um, hotline will do it. Just go, so you'll go be here waiting directly. a long time. John, <laughs> yeah, you may be waiting for so, a long time. Last question. Yes. So, I was gonna send me an email. Yes. Well, this is the offer. Yes. So I need to do 
get, send it to my client and get their signature. So I don't need to make a new transaction kit. So what should it, first of all, how do I need to make a kit for it? Because there is no other option to send it through the, uh, right. so I need to, with, with multiple parties, I, I'm going to have to look into that with multiple parties. Because some of us, as a listing agent in January yes. 2nd, we're yes. going to get an offer and yes. we need to get it accepted. Right. Yes. So, yeah. so we're going to have to <coughs> we're going to have to dig into that a, a little bit deeper. So there's a lot of again, there's a lot of diff different scenarios that we can't possibly cover every single one of them today. <coughs> um, I'm showing you at least how to get started, so you can be at this level. Worst case scenario, print this off and now just do everything else paper. Yeah. Right? But at least you know this part of it. But that's a very good point. We'll sit down. Um, I'm not okay. sure, yes. but um, I think there are two ways how you start the kit. One is from MLS number. Another one, for example, it's exclusive, right? You have nothing in the system. Yeah. Then you can start the kit just by start the kit. You know names. So you do name. You receive the document, the offer. You download it. Then you go what you created. You upload it there, and then you go ahead and you can use how to yeah. sign, sign and everything, and then email it right away from the system. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Did you, that's my, did you take the class? Yes, it's so good, but you have to wait so two months. Can you show us how you want to okay, guys, let's, let's go to the next step. We're going to create an MLS data information form, as if you're, you, know, you're, you have a new listing. You're going to be uploading this listing. So what we do here, if you have a kit, you go through the transaction kit way of doing this, which is create transaction, you go through working with realtor, listing agreement, et cetera, et cetera. But right now, we're gonna go through just creating the MLS data information form. Is everybody okay without with that? Kit. Yes. Without a kit. Yeah. Without, without a kit. If you ever have to do something without a kit, you forgot a form, and you're gonna do your registration, uh, sorry, uh, registration disclosure, all you have to do is go to Instanet Forms, click on that, and then just there's so many different, 2019 Ontario Real Estate, Ontario Residential Tenancy Agreement, MLS Data Information, uh, Toronto Real Estate Board. As an aside, you can actually do the Residential Tenancy Agreement on this as well, which is really neat. Yeah, so you can fill in the RTA on this system, yeah. it's pretty cool. Let's click on search and uh, it's the gonna be a Ontario one, right? The Ontario one? Ontario? Yes. Ontario yes. Residential, yeah. Ontario Residential Tenancy Agreement is here. Cool. Yes, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. It'll be for another trip. We're going to do the MLS data information form, Toronto information form 3.0. Okay, let me go back. Oh, we clicked on forms. We saw the forms. Click on MLS data information forms. We're going to use the Toronto 290 MLS data information form freehold sale. Correct. This is a standalone that we're creating. Therefore, we're going to create new standalone form. So if you ever have to create a form without going into a transaction kit, you click on that form that you need, and you click on create new standalone form. And now it's going to be its own form. It's by itself. And how do you find that form? Just you, yeah, it's okay. You save that and go back. We'll go back. Yeah. Instant forms? Or oh. instant. Instant forms from this side menu. Yeah. Choose the form you need. So let's just say, I mean, for example, you want to do a contract ID and you don't have it on your transaction kit because you were not prepared, right? So I want you to be prepared. You can just type in any form here and you can pull whatever form and just do it as a standalone form. So if you ever need a form, just one form or one off, whatever, you can go into the form section and just use that just use that form as a standalone. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, so let's if you want to sign your MLS sheet, Mm -hmm. uh, you just upload it and if you design you can That's what we're going to do. Yeah. So here, uh, let's see. Go back to forms. You need to close this. Uh, so go back, go back to Internet Forms, MLS Data Information Forms, freehold sale. And now we, hold on. MLS Data Information Forms, uh, freehold yeah, sale. Have. This one's already open. One thing to note, if you're doing standalone forms, any form that you do as a standalone will start appearing in a collection of forms with respect to whatever that form is. So let me try to explain it as, as proper as I can. If you're doing an MLS data information form and not as part of a transaction kit, but as a standalone form, those forms will appear every time you open 
that MLS data information form button. So in case you're wondering where did my form go, you can search for it by name or just go into that form collection and every single data information form for Freehold will be in that folder. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're doing 630s, all the 630s will be in there. If you're doing registrant statement, all of them will be under registrant statements mm -hmm. as a collection of similar forms. So this groups forms similarly as each other in that particular category. So we're going to go through this, but I'm just going to show you the quick button that you're going to press. You see where it says upload listing? Yeah. If you click on upload listing, this will create a draft in your ad edit or broker load. So you do not have to manually input information ever again, as long as you do it on here. It's going to be great for the office because that means every one of you will now be providing, compliantly providing your MLS data information form. I see some of you smiling. So you know who we're calling out on this, right? However, here's the thing. I'm going to, you're going to figure this out anyway. Can you upload this listing without signatures? No. You can, but you're not supposed to be, right? So I know what's going to happen. You're going to end up typing it up. You're going to upload it. You're going to let it load. We still need the sign. But I'm just telling you because you're going to discover it anyway. If you click upload listing, it'll be uploaded as a draft. But, I, but we need it signed. Otherwise, we're going to go in and delete your list. What do you mean by upload listing? Wait, you can I'll upload it as a draft first. As a draft. Before signatures. You're not, su you're not supposed to be doing it. But, and, I, and we will maintain strict compliance on this. So if you're uploading things without getting signatures, we're going to talk. Okay, but no, but as a draft. As a draft, Prior I mean, signature. even as a draft, I mean, the whole point of a draft is you're, you're check it just before you upload it uh, or, or publish it. You should already have it signed at that point. Yes, because if you if you've uploaded this, it's it's under the assumption that the seller has already reviewed all the information. So any, we, we know who's doing this. But any option for clone? For clone? Yes. That's so helpful. You can actually duplicate forms here, right? You can duplicate the form. Uh, whether, whether, so for example, five years down the lot, uh, five years down the road, you want to use the same one and just mm. own it. I haven't tried it, so if you want to try it out, you can. But there is a copy that you can duplicate the forms. Now, whether that uploads, I've never tried that yet. Can you duplicate the MLS listing? Previous MLS listing? You can pull, okay, so oh, Trev's just clone. time period is two years. So if you want to extract information from an existing listing, I've tried, this one I've tried. You, that listing would have had to be active within the past two years. I haven't tried anything long ago. I mean, I have tried it, but I don't think it, it finds the information. That's something you've got to play around with. But um, going, moving on, pretty much you fill in all of this information. So the neat thing about this too, I think Rhea has it as well, but you can, from drop-down menus, choose Toronto, Toronto E6, Oak Ridge. You fill in this information as you would. Yeah. Right, one, two, three. Anywhere, street. Oops, sorry. Anywhere. Hey, I'm listing that property. You're listing that property? Yeah. Too bad. I'm, I'm I that. like it. It's everywhere. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> so, John, how do you learn all this? Like by yourself? Good question. I mean, From the 200 page yeah. manual. I mean, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Like, how can we. Last week, I, I, last week I read the entire 200 page manual. Take the training. Trial, trial and error. Like I, again, when I when this came out, just like you now, it's just through trial and error. I mean, you could watch all the videos. You could take Trap's four-hour course. Videos. Oh. You could reach. You could talk. You know. You could read through two hundred pages, or you could just try it based on, you know, what what we're doing. We're all on the same page. At this. I I only know this as much as you do. Right you know now. a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because I've gone through it. Um, I'm not going to take too much time on this, but you get the point. Yeah. yeah. You get the point. What's really cool too about this is that when you go into the description boxes, you can pick the descriptions now, yeah. rather than typing it in. Mm. That's amazing. So two piece back, you know. Yeah, you always we did. had it before. Yeah. We always had it. Gleaming, yeah, yeah. gleaming hard We sure. always did. Gleaming hard yeah. of course. We always had I guess we don't yeah. upload your listing. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, trade yeah. as much as you do. Stunning. <laughs> We okay. upload and we type the signature. Okay. And we email. Let's pretend we did it. I'm not going to go through signatures and all that stuff okay. here because you get the way to do the signatures. If you want to run through this, we can do it. But it's similar ideas. Okay. If you did this as a, as a transaction kit, and the buyer, the signatures for sellers get mapped out, 
and you sent this as a kit to your seller, mm -hmm. it would have mapped out all the signatures. Mm -hmm. So it's the same process as what we've done with the, the freehold buyer sale, <coughs> except now it's on the listing side. There's no real difference, yeah. except this one, which I click upload listing, and then magically it uploads the listing <laughs> as a draft to add well, draft. As a draft, please do not Let's abuse. leave it as a draft. <laughs> please do not abuse the system. Meaning, we will still maintain strict compliance in terms of having your MLS data information form signed. Just because I showed you how to do it without getting it signed, it doesn't mean that's the proper way to do it. What this has saved you is the step of having to copy and paste, right? Because you've saved that much time, please use that time instead to send this out to your sellers and get them to sign it because that's what we need. You will get phone calls from Megan, from Trish, from myself if it escalates to that level. Oh, they if, do, if you do not put MLS data information forms in your kit. If we ever get audited for that, I mean, it's, it's again, it's not to be harder on you or anything. If we ever get audited for that, we'd be in big trouble. I think we got, the message. Got the message? <laughs> we got the message. But we'll see if you got the message based on the number of calls. Can, I under, next can we go from year. here yes. and yes. immediately email it to be signed? Yes, okay, so I'll show you that. So now we go into Huss's MLS. You go into Add Edit. You go into Drafts. And voila, there you go. Wow. You so now, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like here. Now let's publish it. Holiday. Right? So a couple of things. If you do not complete the required fields, it doesn't evade the fact that you still have to complete the field. So the idea here is treat your MLS data information form as if it was the final copy of the listing already. And there's no other way you should be doing it anyway. I mean, that's a proper way to do it. You would do business the right way. Fill it out completely, all the required fields, everything as if it was already ready to go. Because once you filled out that data information form and you get your signatures, all you've got to do now is click upload. It'll appear as a draft here. And then the, the only next step is just attach your fill out any schedules. Information. You know, fill out, well, the, the information should have been filled out, but then you just upload your photos. So your assistants will thank you, right? Yes. Does it work both ways? Like, if you fill out this one, would it fill out the... No. No? It doesn't work that way. So, so you have to fill that one first. Yeah. Which, logically, mm -hmm. you should be filling out the MLS data information form anyway, because that's what you need signed. It doesn't go backwards. And plus, it's much easier to fill that out than this um, anyway, right? Okay, anything else? So now how do we get that signed so that you remain fully compliant? You click on the sign button here. Mm -hmm. Now click create a signing session with this form. So every form that you create a standalone version of, you can create a signature just for that form. So don't think that just because you, know, you, you forgot your registration statement form, you can create a standalone form and just get that signed if you wanted to. So I'm not gonna go through it because we've gone through that part of it, but again, you go through the details, you go through the form, you know, you, you map out the fields of where it needs to be signed, and then you send it up for signature. Is that okay that I don't go yeah. through this? Because it's, yeah. it's pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? If we have on um, web forms, we're going to go into the, the new forms. How do we do that? <coughs> if you have your old web forms, you want to add the new web forms? No, we are in the new web forms. No. Yes. Do we, can, can we import those to the TREP form, the so, TREP site? So what I would recommend, I mean, is before we go into the CREA, what I recommend with your old web forms is this. Do you really need 300, 400, 600 Material. of those? No. The only things you really need from that are your clauses, if you have good clauses in the, in the particular kits. And you just need to know what forms go into which kit. So. Red Rover does have an option where if you want them to download and upload all the kits for you, they can do that. Uh, if you want to just download, the, like what I recommend is if you really need to keep those forms, just download them as PDF, PDF and save them on your hard drive. Why? Because either way, whether with CREA or TREB, when you upload these forms back <coughs> up, you cannot edit them anyway. You can't edit no, them. Can't. They become flattened PDFs. So there's no, there's Better no real point. Save them and then Better just to download and save and that's it. Or just save your original, I mean, the final product that you have. That's it. Okay, let's do a quick <coughs> Korea version of this. Is that okay? For Vina? And for everybody else who wants to use a Korea version. So, Vina, why don't you come up here because it's going to be your example. Come on, Vina, Vina, Vina. <laughs> so, Vina, 
has employed Red Rover to do the kits for her, which is a smart move to do. When you employ, employ Red Rover to do these kits, make sure you specify if you want them on the Trev or the Korea. Uh, last I checked, last I checked, oh, sorry, Vita. 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 Oh, you Vita, Vita. too? There's two Vita. Vita, Vita, sorry. Vita. Vita. And Vita. Oh, wow. I have a five. Vita, because, just because she had her templates done. I want to show you, um, sorry, Vita. <laughs> Vita. <laughs> Richmond Hill tomorrow. You'll be Vita. Yes. Yeah? Okay, fair enough. Uh, site. Just because Vita has signed, uh, sorry, has done the templates through Red Rover, which I recommend, just check with them. Last I checked, they will do Trev or Korea. You can contact them, yeah. So we'll give you the contact information it's, to Red Rover. It's info at Red Rover. It comes right out. Does anybody have a battery test in case you want to phone Thank you. This one? Yeah, no, no, I don't think it's going to reach. I use them. Uh, well, you can't put the camera there, no? It's going to be the it's worth it. Or does anybody have a... Can I plug into one of your USBs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that okay? Can I use yours, Brooke? Yeah, go ahead. So my phone doesn't die out. Just so you have a full Send recording of this. Later. Send me the invoice. It's okay. I have no problem. Yeah? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Does Red Rover know all the, all the forms and everything? Red Rover knows all the forms. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so we just hit reset. Now we're just doing Korea's web forms. So Vita, you need this. Korea web forms. Click on here. Click on sign in. Okay, there we go. So we're in. Same idea. Same idea. So you're gonna you're gonna get to see. You're gonna get to see what we're talking about. So the look and feel is pretty much the same. There might be some differences in the the way the menus appear or colors and all that sort of thing, but everything is pretty much the same thing. So you click on the hamburger menu. Again, transactions, forms, right? Uh, when it comes to signing, you don't have signing. Because remember, with the Trev version of it, AuthentiSign is built in. It's integrated. Here, I'm going to show you how to link your DocuSign to it. Uh, setup, still here. On the dashboard, you have transactions, you have forms, documents, tasks, same thing. Right? So creating transactions, same thing. You cannot create signing here. That's one thing that's missing. And I'm going to try the, web, uh, the uh, MLS data information form just to see if, if, it's, uh, uh, if it uh, shows up anyway. So with Beta, she had the transaction te template set up. So as you'll notice, you click on system, you click on transaction templates, and it's all there for her. So again, call Red Rover, www.callredrover.com, I believe, or .ca. Uh, not call John Deere. It's not call John Deere and, and have John Deere set this up for you. Uh, but she has all of the kits set up. And so, for example, let's look at landlord freehold based listing of all, of all forms, of all kits. So she's got all the forms there. Working with realtor, listing agreement for lease, MLS data information form freehold lease, uh, a schedule to agreement of purchase and sale. Because if you're a landlord, of course, you want to have your schedule for you. Um, what did you want to see exactly? Uh, How did you go to the thumbnail? Uh, and the transaction kits. Mm -hmm. You go to transaction. Um, transaction, okay. Okay, there are some of them. This one, uh, we cannot touch it, just it's a set here. Mm -hmm. But there is some other, uh, the other part, just the below the transaction. Right. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead and show. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. They put something new for me okay. and something my own transaction. Yes. This is my own and this is something new. If you put something for even free or for yes. there, yes. Um, you can click this one. We yes. cannot touch it. Yes. No. They told me so anything that you brought in. So here's an ex here's the example here. Uh, Beta has brought in forms into this platform. They flatten as a PDF. So load one up, for example. 
it's flat. You cannot touch anything on this. I don't even know if you can copy or paste any. You can't even do anything with it, really. So what I recommend, if you've got 300, 500, 600 kits, 100 kits or, or templates or documents, download as PDF if you need to and just save it on your, on your hard drive. Uh, if you want to upload it, you can. Thank you. But, but you're not going to be able to do really much. Anymore. What's the benefit to have them? To have them? Yeah. This is an archive. But remember, all of these are transactions you've already completed anyway. So you've submitted. Yeah, you've submitted the fully. So unless, again, I use the word digital hoarder. If you like to keep all your stuff digitally, I mean, aside from, aside from that purpose, and if you really have a good clause in there, there really is no use for them anymore. Yes. So, John, Dirk, for example, because I just sent an offer two days ago, mm -hmm. it was not in this format. Yes. So now I want to send another that expired. We want to change the price. Yes. Now I need to go through this. Yes. yes. That's right. But I cannot import that no, offer to no. here. I need you can't, to create you can't import. From scratch. If you did import that offer, it's only going to be a flat PDF anyway. Mm -hmm. so How can I import because I cannot see that offer? You can anymore. upload. You can upload a document. Upload. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, upload. That, in, the, in the documents. So no, no, no. The offer is not here anymore. The document that I create before. On the new platform? Yeah. I don't have access to old platform now. Talk, no, to me, you, talk to me afterwards. Okay. And I'll just hang on. This is something you yes. mentioned for me. Yes. This is done that my own happened. But yes. if you look at the yes. uh, schedule, yes. it's like uh, related to it. Yes. It's not coming, you know. They, it they did like this one? Yes. Yeah, so just reach out to them again and just tell them to fix it up. Or just delete the breaks in the space. Because they've done this through copy paste. Right? So they may have not have gone through the, getting the chance yet of, of properly yeah, formatting it. Uh, if you're copying and pasting from a document that has line breaks, this is what it's going to look like. Right? So that's, that's the reason. You can delete. You can so change it. If you want to just uh, export this one to DocuSign, how Okay, so there's the question. Uh, so everybody's okay with the fact that they look pretty much the same. Yeah. The process is pretty much the same for the template uh, transaction templates. The process is the same for creating a transaction. The real difference is the signing. And I'm going to just try one thing just, for, just to see if... if uh, going to try and see if this will work. Okay, so you see there's no upload button on this? Mm -hmm. So Korea Web Forms does not allow you to upload to a draft. So you, you know, like earlier I showed you the Trev Instant and AuthentiSign where you press an upload button and it creates a draft for you. This one doesn't allow you to do that. So that's one thing that's different between the two. Which means if you do this, you would still have to go and submit it uh, to us to broker load for you or you have to broker load it and plus this was this is what I was talking about earlier there's no drop downs here so yes there's limited fields as to what you can do when you actually broker load this but on the Stratus is on the Trebs version of it because there's a fee from Stratus telling us which fields are, are belong to what or belong to which you have to manually type in two piece washing gleaming hardwood floors but I don't think that's even an option <laughs> uh, same with the areas there's no drop down so, you, so, so that's if, you don't, if you don't match the, the drop down menu, you have to match. You have to match. So, so whatever you type here, it's really tedious. Then. Exactly. If you have, to, I'm not saying that's one know, reason just to use Trebs. I mean, it does help, but I mean, Toronto E9 and whatever is Toronto E9. You can't make something up like Toronto ABC. Like whatever exists exists. Yeah. yeah. We need to know that. But so it's not really the Trebs incident authentic design though. is a bit easier because it pulls the fields. And it knows what fields are if supposed to be. You don't know how there. the field is, then. But this is how you've been doing it anyway for the longest time, yeah. right? So, those are the two options. That's those are that's one of the options. differences. So you can't do a direct upload from here. Um, what else? I would need DocuSign. DocuSign. So you want to export this? So Peter, Peter Carpen's asking, how do I just download to PDF? Um, just type in there, download what. You can what, print, what you you can print this PDF. Any form? Print this PDF. I guess, okay, so let's pretend this form is what you want to download. Uh, save, so file, save, save as PDF. Hopefully that answers your question. There is a send, Peter. there's also a send. <coughs> there's also send, you Where can email send? individual forms. Uh, here, it says send. Send as email. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, setting up the transaction templates is the same. You can watch this video and do the same thing on Korea because it's exactly the same 
uh, it's just a different look. Creating a transaction from scratch is the same thing as well. So on this menu, you just click on create transaction and you'll, you'll notice the same fields. The wizard field is there, importing data from Treb is still there, the template that you choose. So the difference between us and Beta, Beta happens to have every single one of these transaction kits ready to go. So she's ready. She's ready to make a lot of sales in January. Right, Beta? So that's the same process. Signature process is different. So here, click on setup. And okay, you have to bear with me because I have to look at where. Oh, sorry. Not setup. On the signatures, you go on App Store. Oh. So if you're using DocuSign and if you're leaning towards using Korea Web Forms, you click on the hamburger menu to oh. expand the menu, click on App Store, uh -huh. and then here are the options for you. DocuSign, EasySign, next one. Funny enough, AuthentiSign is not one of the options to link. You actually have to pay it, and this is what starts the electronic signature wars between the two. Um, to my knowledge, you have to pay extra to link at the end of sign, and you can see why. How much? Because on Treps, I think it's like 50, 60 bucks <coughs> per year. Uh, per year, I believe. So, link DocuSign, you have DocuSign, right, Beta? Yeah. So, click on link, and then go ahead and sign into your DocuSign to link it. Thank you, you're welcome. Sorry, guys, it took into the uh, to the office no, meeting. We yeah. don't need another. This is very important. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, can't do anything with that. Please, right please come to the uh, potluck next week. Okay, it's going to be an awesome time. I'm not going to talk about this next one, week. One. Uh, next week, December 12th, is our holiday uh, office potluck. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's finished. It's done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, to take it to some other town. You can join us, George. You can still join us. Oh, it's never too late. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to go. Yes, no, that's it. Instead of AuthentiSign, you can upload all the documents to iCloud. Does it mean that it will be available? It's linked already. Yeah, no, no. You have to upload to iCloud. Okay, so we, we're, okay, we're going we're gonna to address that later. We're, right now, we're just addressing this DocuSign. So DocuSign. So you link it to that. Beta with a B. <laughs> linked beta. for DocuSign. Beta linked. Her docu sign. I've been talking for almost two hours. And, you know, Your voice is gone. My voice is gone. Yeah. Nice docu sign has linked. So now, I mean, okay. So this is something that I'm not as familiar with. So here, you're gonna have to bear with me as we discover this together. Can I so going back to the member dashboard. I'm gonna have to take my uh, take your uh, thing off. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Who wants to okay, go? Who wants to share with me? Okay. Yeah, I can do it. No, it's okay. Yeah, we'll use uh, we'll use Vidas. Thank you, Vida. Thank you. Uh, I'm finally <laughs> a part of this. We're, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Here. No problem. Okay. Um, let's let's try a standalone form and see how the signature. So I haven't I haven't tried the signatures yet with this. I was oh. pretty occupied with uh, Trev's Internet of Sign version of this. So let's try the 630. Actually, no, it's not going to be 630. Um, give me somebody. Give me a form. 100. 100? That's too long of a form. Somebody give me a shorter form. Shorter form. 801. 801? Okay, 801. Dude, does anybody need to sign that though? Or? 320. Yeah, yeah, 801 needs to be. Let's do 320, because that's the form everybody loves. Right? Everybody loves that form. Why do you love that form so much? 320. That's the only form you don't forget, right? When you submit the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just He's kidding. upset about Create 81. new standalone form. Yeah. 320 is confirmation of co op. Yeah. A buyer. We'll put uh, Vita. Is that, um, is that correct? Yeah. Seller, Vita, Beth, Music. Right? Good job. Yes? Good. You are Vita is selling 685 Shepherd Avenue. Nice. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No? You get. Like your commission to be? What five percent? Three percent. Okay. Why not? Why not? Three percent. Okay. That's what it said on the MLS anyway, right? That's for MLS. Okay. So, with Travis and Authentic Sign, you remember that the signature fields are mapped. Here, like, I mean, again, this is my first time trying this too on live uh, camera, so uh, just bear with me. Sent to DocuSign. Okay. So you're familiar with this because. 
you're currently using web forms right now where you click and it sends all the documents to DocuSign, this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Send to DocuSign. So it is linked. So the only real, the only thing that's really going to happen here is that it's now going to send it to DocuSign. Remember, Korea Web Forms does not have signature mapping. I mean, as as far as I know, as yet. So you have to now you're in now you're in DocuSign, and you have to manually input the fields of signature. I'm not going to go through this because all of you know how to do this. Right? This is DocuSign training. But that's pretty much what this is. So you uh, just connect it to the, the, the basket sign and then... That's right. Uh, the so to, to connect it, you just click on the basket uh, and then it's going to go through the signature. Can you do it again? Which part? The connecting uh, part? The... Okay, let's do it again. Okay. Um, okay, Korea Web Forms. So to connect to your DocuSign, click on the shopping cart button and just click on link. And then just follow the prompts. And that's it. I think we have to practice one full offer with the DocuSign. We have to practice a full offer with DocuSign. Tomorrow in which one? Do you teach the trip or this? I'm going to, you know what, like, I mean, we discovered quite a number of things in uh, today's session, right? Such as, as Jordan said, it's still going. I mean, this takes such a long time to to go through, right? Uh, Peter is asking how do you migrate your existing transaction yes. kits to the web forms, for the Korea web forms, I'll show you how. Uh, but, so, in a nutshell, Korea's web forms pretty much the same as far as the um, look and feel of it, functionality-wise. Which one would you go much with? The same. Uh, which one would I go with? I'm not gonna go on camera and answer that question. All I'm gonna say, basically, I mean, okay, I'll be very honest with you. There's, there's, I am on camera. There are certain benefits that Treb Internet Authentisign has. Two main benefits. One, signature mapping. It'll save your time. And you don't have to pay for it. What? You don't have to pay for it, except it's paid in your membership fees. So you're technically you're already paying for it. So number one is, instant, is the Internet Authentisign is signature mapped. So you don't have to map that many signatures. Uh, again, you have to check That's to see if every single form is mapped. There may still be some yeah. hidden misses there. Uh, number two is a broker, broker upload. If you love Korea Web Forms and DocuSign, I personally love DocuSign. If you love Korea Web Forms, I would use it for the signatures part, the DocuSign part. I would use this, a Trebison and a Tensign for the MLS upload. But then your transactions are going to be separated. That's the problem with doing that. And so I, I don't know if Korea will eventually directly link to Stratus and map into Stratus. I mean, that's something that's down the road. Another thing, so Nushin asked a question earlier about how to insert clauses. I'm going to show you something real quick to show you something that this does have. But, 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 but Trev doesn't yeah, use DocuSign though, right? Trev doesn't use DocuSign. Trev, Trev is strictly authenticized. So you do not, you cannot choose your signature provider with Trev. It's strictly authenticized. So that's something that you should also consider. I'm just going to show you a quick form because Nushin had a question about where do we find the clauses. Um, but I'm going to show you something that Creo Web Forms has that the other one does not. Uh, try missing it, but then this line does not. So we just created a standalone form here to insert clauses into a schedule. There's a button at the very top. On both of these platforms, it's the same button. It says clause. So on Trev Internet, up then this line, it says clause. On Korea Web Forms, it says clause. So if you go to Schedule A, click on clause, and then you can insert clauses into it. Now the neat thing about Korea Web Forms is that all of our office clauses that Barbara Brindle has spent so much time painstakingly every single year putting together, all of these clauses are here, right? It's not on the Trev Incident Authenticide as you saw me show you earlier. So if you like to use Hallmark clauses, you only have two options. One option is you use Korea Web Forms and you can pull it up from here, or if you're using Trev Incident Authenticide, you have to download from Hallmark Hub the PDF or Word file and then just manually copy it. That's another, and another thing is that if you have created personal clauses, so Bita has beautifully created these clauses from her old web forms, it carries over. So any, any clauses you've created in your old web forms, your legacy version, that will carry over. Now Peter's question is how do you migrate your existing transaction kits into Korea web forms? Now one thing to remember is that when you do that, it becomes a flattened PDF. So I'm gonna show you, as the last thing that we're gonna talk about today, how do you migrate these things into either system? 
either way, whether you download and upload into TREB system or you click the one button, migrate button on, on, on the Web Forms Legacy to Web Forms New for CREA, it will flatten the entire file as a PDF and you can no longer edit it. So then it becomes a question of whether it's useful for you or not. So I'm going to show you, if you don't mind, can I pull up your old Web Forms, uh, Bita? Yeah. Okay, so Bita, I'm uh, pulling up her old Web Forms here. Mm -hmm. So, legacy version. You can still go back and forth. So if you're if you're on here, you're wondering how do I get back to my old? Up until that transition point in January, January first, you can still go back to your old web forms. So here, Vita has kits. I'm going to use this. Uh, let's say uh, Mahmoud and Nahid. Right. Click on that. And so. For Bita's, for this particular kit, it has already been migrated to WebForms. However, you can attest that that's a flat PDF now, right? Yeah. You can't edit it anymore. Yeah. So how you do that, though, is you click on this button here. So every single kit or, temp or any, anything you have in your existing WebForms, WebForms Legacy, there's a button that says Send Kit to WebForms 2019. So if you click on this button, for those of you who want to do this, if you click on this button, it goes to new CREA WebForms. Not to TREB, it goes to new CREA web forms. So if you click this, it goes to your new CREA web forms, and then it will say that it has been migrated, and then what is it called again? So let's, for example, go back to the web forms, and let's look for it. I'm gonna show you what I mean by it gets flattened. You can search for it, I believe, let me see. Right there, right? Does everybody see that? So when I click on it, Every single form in that kit appears in documents, but they all appear as PDFs. And if I click on any one of them, it is a flat PDF. I cannot edit anything on this page. I don't think I can even copy and paste. I've never tried it, but if you tried it, let me know. But it's a flat PDF. But remember, either way, whether it's Korea Web Forms or Trev Incident Attempt to Sign, either way, it's going to be flat. So I'll show you just real quick before we finish off because I know a lot of you want to maybe uh, maintain the archive of your old forms and all that sort of thing. Korea Web Forms is just one button, one button migration. You can't do that with Treb, you can't? With Treb, no. So you that's why you're receiving emails with multiple instructions. As to, uh, I'm sure some of you have been confused, Treb's instruction is download as PDF and upload. Korea's is clicking on the button. That's the difference between the two. When you click this and go into Korea Web Forms, it will not show up on your Treb. Is it individually or we can... Individually. We can one by ask one. all of One them. by one. So again, Red Rover is available if you want to hire them to do it for you. <laughs> but my main question is, do you really need to do that? No. Right? It's, you know, 600... You have deals from 15, 20 years ago. I don't know if actually is what price is around. But anyway, 10 years ago, let's say. I don't think you really need it unless you have a clause that's very particular about that deal. That's really all you need. Okay. So, Honey, yes. Sorry, do we have a duplicate file in, a file in here? For example, usually I, uh, I bring one file, I don't uh, make a new transaction, and then I duplicate it, and then I start to change just the name there. You know? Can you duplicate the, on the new web forms? In the new web there is a There is a duplicate button. So I'll just show you that real quick. Let's see if you have something available that I can do. Um, a lot of these are flat in PDFs, but um, we have to go to a standalone form. Anticipated. Uh, let's just, let's just, let's just, if it's a PDF, you cannot duplicate. Because, so go ahead, show, show me what you want to do. If you go to previous form. So Peter's question was transaction templates. Um, I'm going to have to try to see if you can transfer transaction templates. Uh, I, I don't think it would be because whether it's templates or kits, it's pretty much... Well, okay, let me, let me look into that for you, Peter, and I'll let you know. Sorry, I'm just answering this. Okay, so go ahead. Because there is a line here that's coming about duplicate, edit something, or maybe I have to kill it on some of them. Yeah, if I click on one, look at here, I have a duplicate yeah, file here. Okay. And then I duplicate this one, yes. maybe, and yes. just I change the information. Yes, yes, yes. When I click on new form, yes. this is a new form, yes. and but it's a PDF. PDF. Yes. Right. If 
No, no, you're you're do, you're on the right track. So click on forms. This is what you I think wanted to do, right? So click on a form, and you want to you want to duplicate this form for Okay, so let me. See. So if you want to duplicate the form. You can't duplicate the PDFs. The PDFs are flat, right? But you can. transaction? Can we duplicate transaction? The whole, all of them. I haven't tried, but I believe you can. So, so here, copy. You want to create a copy of this form? Yes. So I have tried this, and anything that's on that form will copy. Uh, transaction kit, to replicate an entire transaction kit, not going from the templates, but from like the actual kit itself, I haven't tried that yet. So copy so there. Have, this one is copy there. It's, it stays in your, so these are standalone forms. You'll see on the forms, right? If it's within a transaction, again, we, we'd have to Like, for this. example, freehold that she already put the clauses. So mm -hmm. I want to duplicate that yes. and then put the information. Can you do it? You'd it's have just to create only one form by one form because you can, you can. So how you do that? Let's say, for example, you're starting from the transaction template, yeah, like and you created that, and you only want to duplicate that. that you go table. into that. You go into that specific form. Like this loads up form by form. So if you want to see all of the other forms in this, you have so to click on it. On the schedule. Yes. So if, yes. as you said, if I want to duplicate this, just one this, yeah, and just change some information. Yeah. So for example, watch test. File, make copy. This one saves in that same kit, right? or in that same transaction that you created. But now I've created a, a second copy of this. Right, there. So you can do that. But it'll appear in that same kit. So the question becomes if you want to do it that way or if you want to do it the transaction template so, way. Yeah. So my question, that's you make it freehold mm -hmm. template, mm -hmm. the whole transaction, mm -hmm. put all the clauses, mm -hmm. like, Confirmation of corporation, everything. Yes. And you want to just duplicate the whole transaction. Is it possible to exactly. do that? I just want to change the buyer name. That's I just like, like this. So let's try. So we're going to transaction. Like, yeah, one, so we'll pull this one, for example. Yeah. I haven't tried that, so bear with me. One. Uh, duplicate. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, these three buttons. So a lot of the time it's about navigating. No, from before. Yeah. Okay, so I went to home. Well, the home here is a transaction. For example, one file, like this one. Copy okay, so there you go. One hundred. Right. Then you go up here and do it. So there's a lot of stuff that we still need to learn about this, and uh, thanks for everybody who has joined and stayed. Um, and uh, everybody who else uh, who watched on Facebook Live. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. If you need help, click on the help button on uh, Trev's Instant Authentic Design or on Korea Web Forms. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, John. Right, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks, John. You know a lot. Have fun. You said you saved it. Amazing. I will make sure it doesn't get deleted when I, when I finish this up. Okay, cool. Thank yeah, you very much. You're putting it on a hub or what? Uh, this is going to be on Facebook.